Patrick, let's name this stadium. At Anderson Raven Stadium for the opening league game for the Anderson Ravens and the Defiance College Yellow Jackets. We're in Anderson, Indiana, and it's a beautiful fall afternoon. The sun's shining. It's about 55, 60 degrees. And uh, both teams come into the record with a league record of 0-0. Zero and zero. So this is an important game for both teams. Last year, Anderson won in a battle, 32-24, to 24, and quite a, quite a game. Very high-scoring game, but very close, and right down to the last play of the game. The uh, Ravens won the toss and elected to receive, uh, the, so Defiance will be kicking off here. And uh, kicking off for the Jackets is uh, Keith Wilson. Uh, Kurt Croy sometimes does the kickoffs, but Keith has been doing the, did the kickoffs last week a little bit. So we'll get to see. Back deep for the Ravens is number one, Alex Gill. He's a big wide receiver for the, Jack, uh, for the Ravens and uh, probably one of the fastest guys on the Ravens team. So they may want to keep it away from him. And the other wide receiver, Hyman Smith. So they got their two wide receivers back to return the kick. And Kurt Croy from Ottawa Glendorf, number 29, will be kicking off for the Jackets. A little wind coming uh, out of the southwest, it looks like. So it may be a, somewhat of a factor, but it's not a hard wind. Otherwise, uh, we're standing on top of the press box, and we might be worried about getting blown off. So beautiful view from up here. And Kurt Croy gets ready to boot it up for the opening league game for the HCAC. There's the boot. Long kickoff back to Hyman Smith. He gets it at his 5, 10, 15, 20, finds a hole. He could go. Croy's the last guy. Keeps him inside. He beat him. Oh, great tackle. And a clipping penalty, it looks like. That's going to help out. Hyman Smith made a great play. Broke right through the middle. Croy forced him to the sidelines. And hopefully it'll be a clipping penalty on Anderson and bring it back holding. So they'll take it back out to about the 45, but it was a beautiful kickoff return from the five all the way out to the Defiance Yellow Jacket 32 yard line where Kirk Croy made a great touchdown saving tackle. The play opened up right up the middle, uh, kickoff return right up the middle and uh, great blocking for Anderson. Uh, got him in a great field position. The, the block in the back will take him back a few yards, but uh, they'll get the ball uh, on, the, on the jacket side of things to get things started. It's homecoming here at Anderson, so uh, one of the first things that Defiance must do is uh, handle the emotion of the homecoming crowd and and the excitement that the teams generally have when they get the opportunity to come out and play in front of a pretty decent crowd on homecoming weekend. I'm Stan Schmidt. I'll be doing the play-by-play, -play, and alongside me is Mark Bockelman, uh, we'll do the only two-time All-American, uh, academic All-American for, for Defiance College. We've got Joel Steele in at quarterback, number 14. He's got the ball handoff up the middle. Big hole. Big hole, and he breaks another tackle, number 12. Who's not in a pretty much straight up the middle once again? Uh, great blocking up front. Uh, got a piece of the linebackers on the way and uh, a couple broken tackles and turns into a big game for uh, for Anderson. Denny Kimmel was a running back there, 42. No huddle offense. And they're uh, on about the 15-yard line. Steal back to pass. A little shovel, shovel inside, 81. Hit down at the four-yard line. 81 is Ryan Allspaw, wide receiver for uh, Anderson. And he's down at the four. Big test for uh, Defiance right off the bat. They're inside the five-yard line. Just, uh, in, just past the three-yard line. Um, they go to the huddle and see what they can try to uh, come up with to uh, Anderson does to try to figure out how to get in the end zone from three yards out. They put Sirianni in the backfield with number 40, uh, Dustin Westhoffer. Some big backs back there. 
in a T formation. Unbalanced line to the right, and they run back to the West left. Westoffer gets the ball down to the one yard line. Westoffer is a 5'11, 215 pound freshman from North Manchester, Indiana. Second and goal, same lineup. Westoffer again, he's in. Wow, and in one minute and five seconds, one minute and five seconds, Anderson goes 42 yards for the score. Set up by the great kickoff return to open the game. Uh, a couple fullback runs uh, up the middle out of the uh, straight T formation and uh, from three yards out, and they score the first touchdown. Scott Schneebelt will be attempting the extra point with uh, Aaron Gluff. Or no, what number is that? Schneeball up. Schneeb Schneebelt up and good. And Anderson goes up 7-0. So they knew what they wanted to do when they got the toss. They wanted to get that ball, and they did exactly how they drew it up before the game. One oh five gone in the first quarter, and uh, Anderson takes lead seven zip. Tough way, tough start for the Jackets, especially when the defense has been playing well um, of late. Um, it's um, they're going to have to find a way to regroup pretty quickly, um, and now it's time for the offense to come on and you know control the ball a little bit, maybe keep the ball out of the hands of the Anderson offense, and um, and, and give that uh, defense a chance to sit over there, talk things through a little bit, and, and regroup like we said. Uh, Schneebel kicks off for Anderson back deep for the Jackets is Casey Johnson and number 11 Trayvon Macbeth. Trayvon, a uh, freshman from Fostoria, and Casey, a uh, senior from Shawnee. Uh, I'll look it up. So we'll see what we can do coming back here. Schneebelt, short boot, taken by Zegda at the 22 yard line, 25, 28, 30, 33 yard line, and could be a late hit. He Referee uh, reached for his pocket to throw a flag, but didn't throw it. Uh, but uh, Tim Zegda, the fullback, took it and made it uh, back out to the 33-yard line. Not a bad starting position. Good start. Uh, anytime you can get past the uh, 20, 25-yard line, you feel like on the offense uh, you're getting pretty decent field position to start your drives. All right, coming out for the Jackets, they have uh, Corey Menfield, a quarterback, number five. Uh, coming to this side is Casey Johnson, 19. On the right side is Aaron Schmidt, four, 84, Jason Brown, 83, Mike Okers. And in the backfield, Jason Gendron, who goes into motion or goes into the slot. Four receivers to the right side. No backs in the shotgun. Minfield back to pass. Throws to Johnson. Good catch at the 40-yard line. Nice grab. Oh, they looked to the sidelines to have that call made, and they, now they're saying he did not get the ball. Looked like he made a good grab and uh, hit the ground, and then it came out. But instead of a seven-yard gain, it's second and ten. A back judge came in from behind where he could see it a little bit better and made the call. Minfield puts Gender in motion again, or no, Brown in motion this time. Tough snap, Minfield. Keeps his feet. Still keeps his feet, falls down though. Back at the 26 yard line. And uh, Corey uh, was looking to his right, but uh, had a defensive end looking in his face. Dar number 50, Daryl Hill, put a lot of pressure on him, and it's third and long now for the about Jackets. A, about an eight-yard loss, third and 18 or so. Then field back to pass again. Goes long. Finds a... Uh, looks like... Uh, 
Okers. Yeah, Mike Okers caught it. He was wide open down the sidelines. Big gain, big third down play to the Anderson 46-yard line. Minfield hit him in stride going down the sideline, and no one was on him. Good pass. Finds uh, in the no-huddle offense, uh, Minifield calling the plays. First time they've done that all year. Calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. Gendron up the middle, finds a hole, gets down to the 41-yard line, picks up about five yards, second and five. Gendron picked, uh, looked a hole and found a nice hole there. Good way to open up uh, first down. Now you're facing second and five with opportunities to do a lot more things offensively. Uh, that third down pass was obviously a key to get the first down, keep the ball, and now we're in the Anderson, uh, on the Anderson side of the field. Four wide, Gen Gendron in the backfield. Menfold calls for the ball. Back to pass, looking to his left. Finds Brown coming across the middle. Jason Brown makes a nice catch. No, he, they, he caught it. He was down, and although the ref is looking, he didn't throw the beanbag down, but it looks like they may be saying that's a fumbled ball. And now they're saying that uh, Brown had it, got about three yards, and fumbled the ball at the... Anderson, 39-yard line, big turnover. And Brown. an early gut check for the uh, Defiance College Yellow Jackets. Defense got to step in and uh, put a stop to it right now, get the ball back. Uh, offense was starting to move the ball. Now they uh, need to come up with a big stop on defense. All right, here we go. Steele back at the quarterback. First drive for Anderson was huge. They need to stop him right here. Got a plenty of time, Steele gets out of the pocket, throws it, incomplete. 85, Hyman Smith had the ball in his arms, but he turned to his head to start to run before he made the catch, and so consequently the ball was dropped. Decent pressure, forced the uh, quarterback out of the pocket, and, uh, and on the run he tried to hit the receiver on the sidelines, and uh, it was really more of a drop than a bad pass, and uh, second and 10. Have Alexander Gill way out to the, the left. Three wide. Steal. Handoff to Kimmel. Hit, hit. Good tackle. Number eight, Mike Hayden came out and forced the play. Made uh, Kimmel stop dead in his tracks. Uh, picked up uh, one, maybe two. Second and eight. Or third and eight. So Hayden, uh, Hayden made a good play. Good support by the, the secondary, forcing uh, the play to the outside where uh, just ran out of real estate uh, for a two-yard game. So third and eight, uh, again, a chance for the defense to shine, come up with a big play, get the ball back for the offense. All right, Steele looks him over. Three, re three receivers, back to pass. They're blitzing. He throws it. They hurried him up. Uh, I tell you what, Zach Fulmer uh, is coming up the middle along with uh, Herson, Ben Herson. And uh, Steele had to throw the ball right now. Uh, good pass. Receiver Hyman Smith wasn't even looking for it. Brings up fourth down and eight. And uh, see a yellow hanky over on the defiant sideline. That's usually in a position of, uh, Some of kind. a line judge calling offsides or a motion. Um, <laughs> it's just a little strange to see it come out so late. Yeah, it was late, flag it. Defense is staying out there like they think it may be on them, but let's wait and see. They waved off the flag, it fell out of his pocket. So defense comes up with a stop on third down that they needed, uh, forcing Anderson to punt. And let's get the offense back on the field. Back deep for Defiance Yellow Jackets is Shane Smith, number three, and Shane Smith, three, and Casey Johnson, 19. Back to do the punting is David Helvey, number three for the Ravens. Oh, that looked like offsides on the Jackets. Low, bad punt. Casey Johnson uh, let it roll down to the, about the 21-yard line. The Jackets were offsides. It won't give... Won't give uh, Anderson a first down, and uh, really that was a pretty good punt from the 38 down to the 21. It's about a 50 yard punt with the roll. 
a 40, 40 some yard punt. So they're going to decline the penalty, give Defiance the ball on their own 21 yard line with 11.08 to go in the first quarter. Anderson leading 7 0. Defiance is second possession. Coach Taylor, that was a good job by Scott Hyland down here at the bottom. Schmidt and Oakers out here to the left. Gender in the backfield. Brown and Johnson out to the right. Minfield up behind center this time. Gives the gender on a counter up to the, about the 24 yard line, second and seven. Tackled by Darrell Hill, who's been in on a lot of plays so far. Hold on to me. Freaking fall. So I told the rest of it to keep falling. Don't hold on to me. So Jackets stay in there, no huddle offense. Minfield in the shotgun this time. Gendron in motion out to the left. Incomplete uh, tended over there for Jason Brown going straight down the sideline. Similar to the play that was uh, successful on third down on the last series, uh, a a sort of a timing pattern, uh, hoping to get the seam just behind the defensive cornerback and hit him in stride on the long sidelines. Looks like they, when they spread them out like that, Mark, that they're leaving the, they got the middle pretty wide open, at least one-on-one -on -one on, in the middle there. Again, two receivers right and left. This time Brown goes in motion to the left. Minfield in the shotgun. Minfield's running. He's got plenty of room. Out. He keeps going. Out to the, about the 37 yard lines where they're going to mark him for a big first down. Pick up of about uh, 12 yards. And a defiance jacket first down. When you spread a defense out by having all the wide receivers out wide, a few backs in the backfield, and then go into motion, it really causes your cornerbacks to play man on man uh, uh, coverage with the wide receivers. Many times they're running downfield and the cornerbacks have to turn their back to follow them. Oftentimes open up that outside for the quarterback on a play just like that. All right, Minfield comes out with first down. Receivers right and left. Quick hitch. Good, breaks the tackle. Jason Brown could go all the way. He's down at about the five yard line. Jason Brown took a hit right at the line, broke a tackle, and is now down to the five. A big gain from the uh, 40 five yard line down to the five so a 50 yard gain and the Jackets have first and goal from the five yard line big play Jason Brown breaks a tackle and runs it 50 yards down the sideline once again uh, getting some help out there with the blocker who was the second wide receiver out there but broke a tackle and there's not much between them and the goal line they're looking at uh, again no huddle offense at the five Jason Brown or Gendron, Jason Gendron, down to the two, down to the one. Second and goal from the one. Second and one, goal from, oh, they're marking it at the two, so second and goal from the two. They got Johnson out wide right, Schmidt out wide left, Gendron in the backfield, Menfield up under the center. Down, Jason Gendron and the Jackets get back on the board and uh, return the favor to Anderson and it's 7-6. Good play. Very similar play to what Anderson did when they scored. And that's just line them up, hand it off to the nearest back and follow the big guys up front. Keith Wilson, uh, number nine, will be in to attempt the extra point. Keith Wilson will attempt the extra point for the five. There's a snap, spotted, booted, and good. 7-7. Seven, seven. Blake Stanball was a holder on that, and that's 7-7 seven seven with 9.37 left to go in the first quarter. And uh, that's uh, what we needed. We needed a good spark, needed to see the offense have some positive uh, things happen. And uh, this could be a high-scoring game the way it's starting out. What do you think? 
Uh, yeah, I think both offenses have feel pretty confident what, what they see the other team doing on defense. Um, uh, Defiance uh, must have seen something during the week if, uh, if they haven't been running the, uh, the no huddle all year. So now they're uh, doing something different, which is always a, a sign of, of trying to make sure you're, you're maximizing your effort, particularly when you get into conference play. And, uh, you know, could be surprising Anderson a little bit. Um, uh, it, the question now will be whose defense will rise up and put some stops together and give their offense the opportunity to uh, come out and put some more points up on the board. Uh, Kirk Croy will be kicking off. And again, Hyman Smith and Alex Gill, both very dangerous return men back there. And we'll uh, see if the Jackets can stop them in the Anderson zone end. All right, the left-footed booter, shorter kick, down to about the 12-yard line, Alex Gill. Go. Good tackle by number 39, Scott Hyland, and you can always tell Hyland's tackles, they, they do not break a Scott Hyland tackle, a senior from Fairview High School. Big play at the 25-yard line, so the Jacket defense has got them down in their own end, and let's see if we can... Get them three and out again here. That makes your special teams feel a lot better, particularly after the long kickoff to start the game, to come back and make a nice open field tackle and keep them back a little bit further. And uh, now the defense gets to play a little bit on the side of the field they're more comfortable with. Gill and Osball out to the left. Smith out to the right. There's a handoff to Kimmel. Hit, breaks tackles. Kimmel is a hard runner. Cronkite comes in and fill. Or no, uh, who was that? Came in and stopped him. 37. Sattler, yeah. Sattler comes in and stops him. But he got four yards. A good effort by Kimmel. Kimmel is one hard runner. Does not go down on the first hit. Osball and Gill out. Or no. Gill out to the left. Hyman and Osball out here to the, to the right. Steele back to pass. Down the middle. Finds Osball. Ryan Osball. And he's got a first down. Waited for the linebackers to drop too far back, and then he just snuck into the middle. That's a long drag pattern across the middle. Good protection up front gives quarterback time and gives that receiver time to come across the middle wide open. Uh, pitch and catch at that point. Gerald Walton, a freshman from Decatur, Illinois, comes in for Ospa. Steele back in the shotgun again. Looking for Kimmel out here in the flat. Little swing pass, Kimmel. Tackled by Highland, but not until he picks up about five yards up to the 43-yard line. It goes down as a running play because it was a lateral back to him. And uh, again, this is another opportunity to get their best running back out on the corners and see if he can break a tackle and make something big happen. Big enough that he got six, seven yards on first down. Oh. Anderson moving the ball, second and four. Second and four. Steele, hand off to Kimmel. Missed by 97, another miss. Hits the defensive back. It's going to get down to the 38-yard line. Kimmel, uh, 97. Ryan Pfefferly uh, got a leg, but that's not going to be enough to stop Kimmel this today. Pretty so. effective play calling. They've been running the ball, and then they uh, stay in that shotgun and, and hand the draw off, and uh, everybody's thinking pass, backing up a little bit, and they run the ball Steel. in the middle. Shovel to Kimmel. Gets down to the 31 yard line. Another pretty good gain, about eight yards. Anderson's line has really got some big splits and are, are spreading out almost across the entire field. Which is a very effective when you're running the kind of offense they are. There's a lot of shovel passes, a lot of draws. It forces the defense to create their own gaps for them many times. Takes to Kimmel. Got a pass out here to tight end, number 86. Clint Rupley was their leading receiver last week, it said in their stat guide, down to the 22 and another Anderson first down. Gill out to the left, Smith to the right, Kimmel in the backfield with Steele, and Steele's in the shotgun. You can see the wide gaps that Stan was talking to about a minute ago on that offensive line. Hand off to Kimmel. No, Steele missed a handoff, and he gets zero yards. That was sort of uh, a version of the uh, Statue of Liberty play, it looked like, where the without, quarterback 
kind of raises up, look like he's passing, and then kind of spins around to hand it off. And he lost the torch. And uh, <laughs> I don't think they were on the same island at that time, the in the running back, so he was all by himself, the quarterback. So second and 10 at the 23. Out right. Steele and Kimmel in the back. Osball, Smith to the right. Gill out to the left. Good catch down there by Rupley, the tight end. Put in there nicely by Steele down to the 10 yard line. That was a great pass. They uh, three, three defenders were closing in on the ball, but uh, it was thrown where the receiver was the only one who could get his hands on it. Comes down with a big catch. Puts him inside the 10. So first and goal. See if the Jackets can uh, stop them from inside here. Kimmel in the backfield. Smith out here. Gil Osball to the left. Tackle to Rupley again. This time tackled by 31, uh, Zajac. Rupley made a good catch. Uh, but it looks like he's injured, though. Zajac was right on him. Steele put it right on the numbers. He's staying down. Score, scores tied, seven all. Six minutes, four seconds go in the first quarter. And uh, while we have the injury timeout here, um, you're looking at uh, Anderson College, uh, Defiance College, Heartland Conference football uh, on Saturday, October 4th. Beautiful day in Anderson, Indiana. Um, and, uh, and a big crowd. A good crowd, homecoming at Anderson. Looks they're looking at his knee down there. Okay, so uh, Rupley goes off. It looks like a knee injury, and that is never good to see, no matter whose team it's on. Too bad he had just had uh, two big catches to get them down to the goal, uh, second and goal from the two. Uh, tight end. Uh, coming in for him is Lou Sight to fill in for Rupley. Uh, this is where they put Westoffer in, number 40, and they go into the T formation. So hopefully they think they can pound it in in a couple, couple drives. Steele sneaks right through. I think he's in. Steele takes a quarterback sneak and gets in for the score to make it 13 to 7. Another good drive for the Anderson Ravens from their own 25, so a 75-yard drive. They get down tight. They go to that straight tee, and they really close down their gaps compared to what they were in the middle of the field as far as their offensive line is concerned. And then it's straight ahead, straight ahead, strong football. Schneebolt, Schneebelt. The extra point. Spotted. Booted, blocked, blocked by number two, Kevin Dixon, it looked like. Kevin Dixon hustled around the corner and I think he got it. And there's another Anderson uh, Raven down. And the way this game's going, Mark, it could be uh, uh, an extra point like that could make a big difference. Yeah, there looks like there'll be a lot of opportunities for things uh, like extra points today and field goals, the way the offenses are playing. But uh, when you're when you're thinking a touchdown and, and uh, uh, an easy extra point, they're not automatic anymore. Um, and uh, great play by the Defiance College Yellow Jackets uh, makes it 13 to seven. It's not a victory by the Jackets in terms of uh, stopping them, but uh, that one point could be big at the end of the game. You could look back at that block field goal, that block extra point, and say that could make a difference. So 5:37 left to go. Or 5.39 left to go in the first quarter. It's 13-7, Anderson up. But another injury to Anderson. Looks like one of their interior linemen who got probably tangled up in, the, in just the, uh, the surge on both sides uh, at the extra point. And they're helping him up. And unfortunately, this is another leg or knee or ankle injury. He's holding that left leg pretty still. Yeah, 57. That's uh, Corey Rupley. 
I'm going to look to see if those are brothers. If they are, the mom in the stands has just got to be 57. Corey Rupley's from North Manchester, Indiana. 84, or uh, 87, or 86, Clint Rupley, North Manchester, Indiana. Brothers on back-to-back -back uh, plays are injured with knee injuries. Uh, looking down at the sideline, uh, Clint is uh, in a great deal of pain on the sideline, and his brother now is not looking much better there in the on the sidelines. And this cannot, this is just not a good day for those for those boys. Also back deep for the Yellow Jackets are Johnson and uh, Macbeth. Schneebolt, Schneebelt. There's the boot. Nice kick this time. Macbeth takes it on the five. Almost falls down. 10, 15, 20, 25, no, 24 yard line. Hit hard and stop right there by Westhoffer. The big back on their uh, T formation in the goal line situations. So 24, first and 10 from the 24 yard line. <clears throat> Good coverage by the Ravens. Offense trots on the field, uh, play called on the sidelines, and they're ready to go right uh, when the official signals, pretty much. Schmidt and Okers out here to the left. Brown and Johnson out to the right. Okers goes in motion. Leaves Schmidt in one-to-one -one coverage here. Oh, no, Jandron, Jandron cuts through, gets out to the 28-yard line, 29-yard line. So he's got about five. Four or five yards, second down and five. Very similar offenses on both teams. Spread them out, keep them honest with the run uh, from the lone back, and uh, you know throw the ball around a little bit. So um, we're watching mirror images, and let's hope the results are as good for uh, Defiance as it was for Anderson in their last possession. Minfield in the shotgun. Over his head, he jumps on it at the own, his own 14-yard line. Bad snap. We had a couple times that happened last week, and we just thought they might have been working on that all week. And you're sure that they did work on it, and their coach is probably even more of a loss of why it happens the second week in a row. Third and 20. Need something big to happen here. Minfield with Gendron in the shotgun. It's looking left. No, quick. Oh. Tackled for no gain. It was a little pit. There's a little uh, short uh, screen pass to Gendron, and he was stopped for no gain. Fourth down. Yeah, it appeared the defense was slanting that way or moving that way to start with. So uh, it was just one of those chess match that uh, moves that uh, ended up in Anderson's favor as they were headed right toward where we wanted to run the ball. Blake Stanbaugh from uh, Swanton, Ohio, doing the punting, standing on his own goal line. 3:52 left to go in the court. Quarter. There's a snap, low snap, he gets it. Nice boot. Good deep, beautiful kick out to the 38 yard line. Picked up there. And tackled, and he gets, but he gets back to the 48 yard line, so it's about a 14 yard return by number. Thirty. It's hard to read their numbers. Thirty-eight. Dustin Christian, cornerback. So they're in defiance territory. They've got good field position. This is a, a beautiful punt from the 14, uh, 36, and 12. It's a 48-yard punt out there and a 14-yard return. He hit it a long way, and uh, many times when that happens, um, it, you know, the advantage goes some point to the return team as they have the opportunity to uh, get momentum up the field before the coverage can get downfield. Steele in the shotgun. Kimmel back there with him. Jackets blitzing. Gives it to Kimmel. He's hit. Slowed up. Kimmel gets hit a couple times and still falls, falls forward. Finally tackled by Mike Hayden, but not until he gets about four yards to the 44-yard line, second and six. But he was hit in the backfield. Kimmel is, is one uh, shifty runner. Out. Is that tight end to your right? Yep. Tight end trips right. 
Pfefferle gets through quickly. Come on, baby, come on. Right after him, gets out. He's run after Steele, throws it out here. Caught at the 35-yard the line by number 85, Hyman Smith, for a first down. So Steele looked like he was in trouble. Pfefferle broke right through the line. and uh, But Steele hits Hyman Smith coming back for the first down. Again, good individual play with quarterback. Gets outside, scrambling for his life, and then throws a beautiful pass, uh, a very catchable pass that the wide receiver gets on the uh, sideline. Uh, Steele and Kimmel in there. Three wideouts. Steele hands off to Kimmel. Hit by not Fulmer. Then wrapped up by Diddy and Hayden. Or no, Dewar, or Herson out there and Hayden. Fulmer got through and broke that uh, play up. And uh, then uh, Herson and Hayden came in to make the stop for a loss of about four. Second and 14. Kind of penetration that Defiance College uh, defense needs to make more frequently. Um, take away that uh, draw play on the, on the run. And that play usually starts deep in the backfield. And if you can make some of those um, tackles behind the line of scrimmage, it may change how the offense has to uh, go about their business. 2.15 left to go in the first quarter. Second and 14. Steele back to pass. He's got a blitz going. He had to get rid of it quickly. Hits 81, who's hit down to the 30-yard line by number 94. Comes out from the line. Nate Jensen came out from his defensive end and made that play. But Ryan Osball got the catch, got back to the 30. So they got about uh, nine yards, eight yards on that play. Third down and four. Third down and five. I got Smith out here to the right, Gill and Osball out to the left. Osball now come into the backfield or goes in motion. There's a hand in, inside handoff to Smith and he's there we go. tackled by 97, Ryan Pfefferly, who came in on another play and made a good pinch and that one got him for a loss of about six. So it's now fourth and 11. And um, from the 36, you almost think that they could probably go for it and not afford, not give up too much. And that's what they're doing. They've got uh, four wideouts. And I'm sure they're thinking they've made a number of plays more than 10 yards today, and they figure let's do it on fourth down now. Steal back to pass. Down to Ospaw, down to the 15-yard line, and it's a first down. Oswald did a little curl inside the safety and, and uh, behind uh, Diddy, the linebacker, and he got a first down. Made that look pretty easy. They have a little crowd participation here on the first downs. So big play for the Ravens. Uh, Going to run into the end of the first quarter here. 40 seconds left to go. Ravens up 13-7. Steele with Kimmel in the background. Steel backfield. Steele back to pass. Looks like a oh. Kimmel touchdown. Little screen pass to the right to Kimmel. He just uh, slid out of the backfield. Everything was flowing to the left. Kimmel flowed out to the right, and there was no one there. Again, probably all the spreading of the field, the motion, the things like that that. Uh, uh, ended up with, um, it appeared like a coverage that didn't get taken care of by the de uh, Defiance College defense as he was really by himself. And um, let's see if this uh, extra point is as eventful second time, third time around as it was for this, uh, them their second touchdown. Schnee Schneebelt to kick. Interesting they're not going for two to get that two points back. This time he boots it through. Dixon just about got it again, but the score now is Anderson 20, DC seven. And we're still not out of the first quarter yet, so it's a lot of activity, a lot of action in the first quarter here in Anderson at uh, Raven Stadium. Um, again, another beautiful day. And the cheerleaders for Anderson do push-ups uh, for the number of points that are scored for Anderson, so they've got 20 to do. And the Jackets are going to try to get something going on offense here as they come out with uh, 28 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Schneebelt to tee it up. Johnson and uh, Macbeth in the deep return spots. 
Zegda and Okers are the two up, up backs. Referee takes his time bringing the ball out to the kicker. Places it down on the 35 and we're ready to get this next one kicked off. Schneebel, there's the boot. Kind of a knuckleball kick taken by Okers at the 22, 30, 35, 36 yard line, 35 yard line. Mike Okers tight end, caught the ball and got out to the 35. So okay. Defiance still starts out with not bad field position. Uh, 23 seconds left to go in the first quarter. So a lot happened in this quarter. Brown out to the left. Johnson and Schmidt to the right. Gendron in the backfield. Minfield up behind the center. The referees have no time to stand around here. Everybody's coming out no huddle, even off the sidelines. Minfield on a little counter to Gendron. Gets a couple yards. Oh, falls forward nicely up to the uh, just about the 39 yard line. So he got about five. Four. Second down and six. Nice play, no huddle again. That's going to be the end of the first quarter with the Anderson Ravens leading 20 to 7 over the Defiance College Yellow Jackets in a very uh, eventful first quarter. And so those switch ins. on this sunny day in uh, October. First league game for both teams. And right now, Anderson is winning the battle. Big plays, uh, big plays on thirds and fourth down that have given Anderson, uh, kept drives alive for Anderson and put him in a position to uh, score from, actually most of their plays have been from in close. They had a couple of short touchdown runs and then about a 15 yard touchdown pass on a swing pass to the, uh, to to the running back. Yeah, very well conceived play there. They uh, ran everybody across the field to the left and Kimmel came out of the backfield and had nothing but green grass to go. So. Defiance is lone touchdown coming on a short run uh, again after a nice drive and um, so they're capable they've shown signs of making being able to move the ball a couple key errors a bad snap on uh, on in out of the shotgun uh, put him in a bad way on, in in the last drive so uh, uh, if they can cut down the mistakes they've been able to move the ball pretty effectively. Referees waiting for the uh, television crew to come back from their commercial. So here we go. He blows his whistle. They're ready to go. They've got uh, Brown and Schmidt out here to the right. Johnson to the left. Gendron goes in motion out of the backfield. Minfield. Bounces it. They're calling it an incomplete pass. They may have been looking for a backward pass and then a long pass down the field, Mark. Um, yeah, it was kind of hard to figure out why that pass would have been uh, so short unless it was intentional. But uh, the way they had lined up on the play, um, the running back was in front of the quarterback, and so it just becomes an incomplete pass. So we now have uh, three wide to the left, Brown out here to the right. Third and six. Big third down play for the Jackets. Pass uh, just about intercepted out there, intended for Aaron Schmidt, uh, number to Bobby Fox. Officials time out. Again, they're calling for some another uh, training help out on the middle of the field. Yeah. Has a late throw down the sideline. I think Aaron had him beat, but he threw it behind him. And uh, we've got some first quarter stats here. And ball. Punts, gets a good roll, taken by 31, breaks it through the middle. 
Dustin Christian got the ball back out to the 30 yard line, tackled by uh, Sattler, number 37. Pretty good punt by Stanball. Some first quarter stats uh, nine first downs for Anderson, three for Defiance, uh, 51 yards rushing, the 12 for Defiance, 116 passing to 89 for Defiance. So the passing's pretty even, but the rushing's a big difference. And uh, one turnover for the Defiance, which is a, was a big, big play. 9.06 time of possession to 5.04 for Defiance. So Anderson winning that battle. 14.39 to go, second quarter. 20, low snap, steal back to pass. He's got Gill. Gill makes a cut. Gets tackled out there by number 31, Zajac. Uh, the low snap steal just got it off. The rush was right on him. Well, that's a play where they bring the wide receiver in almost right along the line of scrimmage and right across the middle. It's almost a middle screen to the wide receiver. Happens pretty quickly, catches a lot of people off guard, and you can usually turn it over your, to your uh, wide receiver to have him make the extra yardage then. All right, steal from the 41-yard line, first and 10, dropping deep. There's Kimmel. Good tackle by Mike Hayden, 97, made, uh, Pfefferly made some good penetration there, and they got Kimmel for a yard loss, second and 11. They've gone, they've gone to that draw a lot on second down, uh, particularly after you know a fairly nice play, a nice, nice pass play. Next thing you know, they're running the draw. I think Defiance is catching on a little bit, and they had people in the right position for that, uh, anticipating that play. All right, let's see what they do now. They've got uh, Smith out to the right, Gill and Osball out here to the left. Steele and the quarterback, Kimmel in the backfield. Steele back to pass. Looks like a... He's got a, he threw that away. There's nobody over there. They should be throwing the flag. He was inside the, the ends and uh, threw it out where there was no one. No, no flag, but it's third and 11. Good defense uh, by the Jackets. They put a lot of pressure on him. Need a big defensive stand right here. This is, uh, this is critical. Uh, without Rupley in there, uh, they haven't looked for their tight end, uh, number 12, Sipe. Steal to Hayden. Uh, no flag. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. Fourth and 11, so. Steal was uh, throwing out here to Gill. Pretty well covered. And uh, so the Jack of Defense makes a big stop. It's kind of like a service break uh, with this game going on. If you hold your serve, you score the way they've been going. That may be true, but there's no love in football, so uh, we can't keep score that way. All right, there's the punt. Takes a lot of time. Get away from it, down to the 33-yard line. So the punter, David Helvey, uh, gets it to the 33. And tell you what, Mark, he takes a lot of time delivering that punt. And uh, they may be looking for that a little bit later on. That's one of those things that uh, you time it right. Uh, you, you pick the right opportunity to, to, do, uh, to maybe put a little more pressure on the punter. Um, but that uh, it's one of those things that you look at from up here where the coaches are stationed. And uh, they'll put that in there. Uh, many things to remember during the halftime, and maybe they'll come up with a big play in the second half of the, in the punting game. Four wide to the right. Schmidt alone on the left side. Minfield alone in the backfield. Johnson goes in motion to the left. Minfield. Throws it long. And a short pass was thrown short. Looked like the defender person grabbed Johnson so he couldn't come back and get the ball. Casey was complaining that uh, he was held there, but no dice, second and ten. They were looking long on the first play. They've been running everything down the sidelines. Nothing up in the middle. Same formation. Trying to overload on the sidelines. One, the last play they ran the wide receiver in and then brought the man in motion, try to hug the sideline and get behind the secondary. Infield looks right, comes back left. Who? Pretty well read by uh, number two, Bobby Fox, over Schmidt's head, third and ten. Fox was almost there before Aaron was. 
Schmidt and Johnson wide right or left. Edward Gator and Jason Brown wide to the right. Big third down play. Need to keep the drive alive here. Minfield fakes it. He's got a draw play and nothing doing. They were looking for that. Westoffer, number 40, who plays linebacker and full and fullback on the offense in the goal line situations, ate him up for a five-yard loss. Yeah, you're trying to pop that one in there, really surprise them. Uh, we've been throwing a lot, so uh, you're trying to catch them off guard, and it, it didn't work. So we go back to punt and uh, get the defense ready to try to come up with another big stop on the Raven offense. 12.40 left to go in the second quarter. Stand ball back to punt, standing on an all 10. Good snap. Nice spiraling kick over the head of the punt return, and he's got a great punt there. Down to the 20 yard line, 19 yard line down there, but uh, beautiful punt uh, from the 31 to the 20, so that's uh, 19 and 30. It's 49 yard punt, so Stanbar is doing a good job at changing field position here. Now let's see if we can get the jacket defense to stop him, and we'll we'll get some good field position back. Three and out would be key for the Yellow Jackets right now. Give their, again, give their defense a chance to rest a little bit, but uh, they got to stop them first. Wide across the field. It's like they just line everybody up all the way from one sideline to the other. Steel in the back. Slow snap. Oh, got a good pass to Kimmel. Gets outside. Cronkite did a good job to fight off uh, Gill, but uh, that's about a 15-yard gain for Kimmel on a little, little uh, screen pass out to the, the left side. That's a sweet play they got going. Again, spread everybody out, make the defense form its own uh, gaps, take advantage of some one-on-ones with backs and receivers. Go back to pass. Oh, Hayden. Fumbles recovered. Great play. Oh, there's a late, two late flags, three late flags. Hayden went in, hit the quarterback, uh, but it was fumbled and uh, recovered by, it looked like, uh, who got it? Mike Malcolm. Malcolm, looked like 23. Malcolm got it at the 48 yard line. Uh, they're talking over, they, there's like four penalty flags. Everybody uh, threw a flag, so we'll have to sort it all out. See if uh, all the penalties occurred after the fumble or if it's gonna make this change of possession a little more in jeopardy. Well, both uh, units went off the field, so I think they all believe that it was after the change of possession. That's oh. passing, offensive pass interference. On the Ravens. Can't figure out why they would all throw it from all over the place for one pass interference. It was probably on the right side of the... Play. Then we have a personal foul, dead ball personal foul. Okay. That's what the other flags are for. So now, great break for uh, Defiance. Uh, they get the uh, the turnover and uh, attack on 15 yards on the uh, personal foul after the uh, fumble. Um, somebody must have been a little aggressive trying to jump on the, ex the loose ball. Um, and so it ends up, uh, they start at about the 33-yard line of Anderson. Four wide right, one to the left. Jason Brown out to the left. Minfield in the shotgun. Good chance for the Jackets. Johnson goes in motion. Minfield gets a snap. He's got it right up the middle. Good block there. Gets out for another third, about five yards. Aaron Schmidt came in and laid a nice block in and helped uh, Corey get another five yards. Corey sh Minfield showed a lot of speed getting up the middle there and uh, got about uh, down to the 28. So about six yards, second and four. Nice play. Very effective play. Uh, Again, now your linebacker's got to worry about the quarterback running the ball every now and then. Uh, maybe their next drop won't be quick, won't be so deep, and they uh, get a ball, get a receiver back behind the linebacker. Two tight ends, two wideouts. Gendron right straight up the middle. It's a different look for the offense. Down so. to the 24, a uh, little short of the first down, probably about a yard short. So it'll be third down and one. Going two tights is a different look. Uh, again, giving Anderson something else to think about. Um, and it looks like they're going to... Same play. 
What do you think? Whatever it is, got to get him a big first down here. Gendron again gets down to the 19-yard line. Picked up a five on a short yardage position, and uh, that's a good way to look at it. 11:25 left to go. First down for the Jackets. Be a good time to get them looking up the middle for a run and then get a slant or a post down the middle because uh, safety's going to be cheating up to make a play. Same formation again. Fakes it this time. Schmidt, touchdown in the corner. He just lobbed it up. Schmidt went up. No contest with the defensive back over there, Christian. And uh, Schmidt gets six. Nice play, one on one. They ran that well. Everything you were just talking about, Stan, took place. They're so concentrated on, on uh, what was happening up the middle, on a more on a tighter formation. Got a one-on-one -on -one coverage. Um, Aaron's a, a big receiver that they played a little jump ball in the corner of the end zone, and uh, he won at that time. Keith Wilson, Stan Ball spots it, boots it. It's good. Yeah, the uh, defensive back covering Aaron. Uh, is uh, 5'8", 170. So against a 6'4", uh, 220, uh, there's a little height advantage difference there. Corey just threw it up nicely, let him make the play. 20 to 14. So the Jackets uh, hold serve and are ready to kick off to the Ravens. Keeps everything uh, everything in, uh, in terms of the not getting to, uh, Anderson too far out in front. Uh, they're still in the ball game, down six. Um, so, uh, you know, it's time to play a little more defense, make the big uh, play like they did the last time, got a turnover, um, and then took advantage of the turnover. So, um, uh, again, uh, there's nothing, no big secret in this next few series. It's stopping them and giving the offense a, time, a chance to come back and maybe get the tying score or go-ahead score. All right, Kurt Croy to tee it up. At his own 35, back deep are uh, Gill and Smith. Hyman Smith and Alex Gill. Good boot. Gill takes it on the six. Pretty line drive kick. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 33, 34 yard line. Ran into the middle and uh, Zajac's at the bottom, or Sattler's at the bottom of that, and Hetrick. Two players that are in on a lot of special teams plays for the Jackets. Now here they come. They run off the field onto the run off the sideline onto the field. They've got three wide to the left. They've got Gill. Oh, Gill and Osball to the left. Smith and uh, Sipe on the right. Steele looks this time for Osball across the middle. They were kind of looking for that. Still got like four yards. Tackled by Diddy, Fafferly, Hayden, Fulmer. Uh, but they were they, the linebacker sensed that one was coming. Plays worked pretty effectively for Anderson. They're going to probably run it until Defiance stops it more consistently. Um, they get uh, five yards on the play, uh, facing second and five. Steal back to pass. Oh, Fafferly, they get another cross the middle. Oh, Hayden just tripped him up. Got him at about the 42 yard line. Uh, where the linesman ran in, they gave him a pretty bad spot, but we'll take that. So it's third and about two or three. Big play here for the Jackets, and with this wide open offense, it's never know what could happen. It's not a sure thing. Pfefferly right over the center. There's Steele. Just about got him offside. Oh, he did! Steele barked out the signals a couple times and uh, brought Pfefferly right across the middle. Pfefferly was trying to make the play, and in his exuberance, Gave him a first down. Dead ball. Offsides. Jackets. From third and three, they go to first and ten. 10 3 left to go in the half. 20 to 14, Anderson up. Had a very entertaining football game. Taking both brothers off. All right, back here we go. 
Steele back uh, in the shotgun. There's a good picture of how spread out they are on their offensive line. Uh, just amazing. Kimmel gets the ball tackled right there by Pfefferly. Good play. Couple yards. Pfefferly was watching that. Kind of read the quarterback. He drops back a few extra yards and then takes even a few more steps back before he throws that. Yeah, the defensive linemen, uh, it's, uh, they're caught in that rock and hard place kind of situation where do they blow as hard as they can to go after the quarterback or do they need to help out with those uh, little screen passes across the Low line? snap. There's a handoff to Kimmel. Tries to cut back. He's hit. Person and uh, Diddy make the tackle for about a one yard gain. So now it's third and seven. Two big defensive stops by the middle of the jacket defense there. When I say the middle, that could be anywhere from uh, one hash mark to the other hash mark. Third and seven. Steele, Kimmel, Smith wide to the right, Gill, Osball to the left. Back to pass. Still a little, Kimmel. Showed some speed and he gets just enough for the first down tackle by Hayden, Fulmer, Diddy, and Cronkite. Their, their the, last five, six passes have all been screen type passes where they haven't really gone downfield right at the line of scrimmage. The uh, defiance is, uh, you know, with a lot of linebackers, defensive backs in the game, and they're, uh, they're just trying to say, uh, you, uh, you guys backpedal, we're going to throw it short and let's our guys Kimmel again run. on the draw. Good play, but good hit by Diddy. Really got down and good form tackled, made a nice tackle for one yard gain. Great play. Kimmel had some big yardage if uh, Diddy didn't make that play. He filled real nicely in there. I think Anderson's waiting for the Jackets to come out and start playing for those uh, those screen passes, and then they're going to go long. You know, they're looking for the D backs to come up and start making plays. You're, you're playing what the other team gives you. you Steel, wide out, caught by Ospaw. Oh, big block, Osball could go. Huge block out there. Zaychak was up, uh, breaking down to make the tackle and uh, another defense, another receiver came back and made a big play there. And Osball runs in untouched after that into the end zone. Just a little, little uh, out. Osball runs in for the score, 26-14. Offense is staying on the field to go for the two-point conversion this time. And the Jackets are going to call timeout. They realize how critical this play is right here. And with eight minutes left to go in the half, and that's uh, only the first timeout they've taken. They're still in, sitting in pretty good position. So the wise timeout here. Uh, defense been on the field a long time. It's time to get them a breather. Uh, like you said, Stan, to try to make this uh, big stop on uh, on the two-point conversion. Um, but it's uh, it, it, even that last play may have been a bit of fatigue. They got caught on the sidelines, a big block, and we just uh, weren't in position to uh, get the angle on the on the receiver as he went down the sideline. Yeah, some one of the other receivers should get a get a star on their helmet for that one. That was a great block they threw on the, on Mike Zajac. Chris Zajac. Defiance College coaches uh, talking with their defense on uh, what they might expect on this uh, two-point conversion. Uh, we've seen Anderson go to the uh, T backfield, three running backs in a straight line in the backfield when they've been down close to the end zone. Um, let's see what they line up in here on uh, the two-point conversion attempt. They're spread out. They've got uh, Kimmel with uh, Smith and Osball to the right, Gill to the left. And this is more of what their midfield offense has been. Look at those splits the linemen want to take. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. It really is. Uh, uh, and, and so what's... It looks like a kickoff, the kickoff team. Now they're coming in. Ooh. They moved down a little bit. Everybody moves in. Kimmel in the backfield. There's a rollout by Steele. Throws it. Incomplete. Good defense. Put a lot of pressure on by Piper, number or, uh, Nate Jensen, number 94, put pressure on Steele. They rolled right, and uh, it was pretty well covered, although uh, Smith did have an opening in there. Uh, Steele, because he was running, wasn't able to hit him, and so another extra point missed, 
And um, 8.07 left to go in a half. And the Jackets now have got uh, two points up on them once they get those touchdowns. So They rolled them out on the two-point conversion, uh, narrowed the field in, in half for the receivers. They were working the corners front of the end zone and the back of the end zone. Uh, the secondary did a nice job of uh, putting themselves in position to force the quarterback to make a great throw, and that time he did. So Schneed belt. Ready to tee it up at the 35. And the referees are getting their work out. There's not much time uh, when they're in. No, there's no huddles out here on the during the normal play. Schneebelt puts it down at the 35, and they got uh, Casey Johnson and Trayvon McBeth back. So let's see what we can do here. Schneebelt boots it. Nice end over end kick. McBeth at the 18, 20, 25, 30, 35, 38 yard line. Nice return by Trayvon McBeth. Great field position once again. Get the offense out there and um, let's see if this track meet continues. Looks like they're bringing pizzas up for us for halftime, Mark. I'm guessing they don't make it to the top of the. They may not make it to the top up here. All right, here we go. We've got um, Jason Brown out to the left, Schmidt, Gator, and Johnson on the right, and uh, Gendron in the backfield. Menfield in the shotgun. First and ten from their own 38-yard line. There's a snap. Menfield has oh, Mrs. Brown threw it behind him. Brown is on a little curl in front of uh, in front of Bobby Fox, the 5'8 D back. A little fast. Switch sides. Number 85, Edward Gator, has been in in the last few series. He's from uh, Miami, Florida, a freshman. Speedy wide receiver, about 6'3. Second and 10. Gator out wide to the left. Menfield out here to Gendron. Blocked by Schmidt. Gendron breaks the tackle, gets up to the 41-yard line. Uh, he's got about three yards. Nope, two. They're giving him the 43rd and eight. Big third down play, 7.43. Time to make a play here and get seven, seven or eight yards. Gator and Schmidt wide to the left. Johnson and Brown out here to the right. Gendron in the backfield, third and eight. They don't want to give it back to Anderson, that's for sure right now. Long count. Long pass to Schmidt. Intercepted on a 24. Minfield threw it up, and uh, it was just a little overthrown. And uh, Aaron had two guys on him, and uh, it was a safety actually coming off the other receiver that made that play. Really, uh, not too much different than a punt there. <laughs> threw it from the own uh, 38 down to the 24-yard line, so 38-yard punt in essence. Ball kind of got caught in the wind a little bit because it looked like it took off. Looked like Aaron was uh, looking for it to be down a little sooner. But here we go. Anderson with the ball. 7.09 left to go in the half. Steal back to at the quarterback spot. Hand off to Kimmel. Good tackle by Diddy out at the 27 yard line. Picked up about three. Second and seven. Good tackle by Diddy. Anderson offensive front is pretty much a standing up putting their hands on the defensive uh, linemen and letting the back decide which way they want to go. And they're just kind of turning their defenders and, uh, and saying pick a hole, and the defenders have to slide off and make the tackle, and they're, they're doing a decent job of it. Uh, that was a three-yard gain on first down. Steal back to pass, throws it out to Ospal, makes a good cut. Tackle there by number 44, Diddy, coming out from his linebacker spot. But... First down for the Ravens. 
The beauty of the shotgun and this kind of offense is the quarterback can unload the ball pretty quickly, so it's very difficult for a defense to put a lot of pressure on a quarterback, even if they're blitzing them, because he's getting the rid of the ball in a second and a half, two seconds, and uh, a lot of short passes. So, you know, as a defensive coordinator, it drives you crazy. Should we blitz? Should we play, you know, man coverage? What should we do? Steal well, back, back the action. pass. There's a pass again. Osball runs under him. Who Cronkite just about letting get outside, but he made a stop. But he got uh, about seven yards there. They're running, a th they have three wide on the left, and then they uh, send two long, and then the, the inside slot guy just slides out underneath that. There's a little uh, area there that they've got a uh, free area. That's the same play that he scored on on the going the other way. The steal back to pass is uh, three wide to the right this time. Hands off to Kimmel. Oh, just about got him. Hayden missed. Oh, good run by Kimmel. Yeah, he broke through like three tack, three arm tackles. And he's down to the jacket 46 yard line. Defense is spread all over the field. So when they're getting to the running back, they're not in the best tackling position because they haven't come a long way to try to make an attempt. And many times they're sort of going to their knees or have to make a tackle down below the below his knees and he's strong enough to pull away from those. Kimmel, not a particularly huge back, but he is a very powerful back. Kimmel's 5'8", 180 for Markleville. And it looked like a blitz. Oh. Uh, something happened before the snap of the ball. Well, maybe an illegal procedure penalty there. Looked like the quarterback was looking for the ball maybe a little bit quicker than it got back there to him. Dead ball, illegal motion. Oh, it'll be first and 15. And that they haven't had, a lot of, haven't had a lot of penalties this game. In fact, at the end of the first quarter, there was only one penalty for 10 yards for the Anderson and Defiance had zero. Now they both have picked up a couple, but it's been relatively a, a penalty-free game. A couple turnovers, one for each side. And each turnover resulted in a score for the other team. The first and 15 from their own 49. Steal. Hit. There's, yeah, 94 finally gets him. They had a um, good coverage downfield. They were looking long that time. They thought we might have been changing the changing up, but. You know, and a lot of bodies were in there to uh, have a shot at the quarterback that time. A very positive sign for the defiance defense. Uh, they get the sack. Another five-yard loss. Uh, 20 second 20. And yeah, Nate Jensen when made the sack on that play. They got three wide to the right. Gill on the left. Cronkite up and bump and run on Gill. Steele looks to the left on the out. Kimmel makes a play. Another play. Tackled though by Highland. Or no, Wormlinger. But he got 10 of it back, so now it's third and 10. Little flare pass that, uh, again, effective because they got him on the corner. Yep, Jensen had kind of taken an in route to get to the quarterback, and they, they went right out around him. And then Kimmel always seems to slip one tackle. The first tackle is, uh, makes it uh, makes a miss. So it's third and 11. Big play for the defense. 4-11 left to go in a half. 26-14 Anderson. Out left near good. Out left near good. Out left near good. Steele looking left. Throws it long. Tipped away by uh, Mike Malcolm. Great play, real nice play. Uh, Steele was going backwards when he threw that ball. Uh, Allsball had a step on him, but he had no, nothing on the ball, and Malcolm made a nice play on it. Big stop for the defense. Opportunity to get the ball back, maybe do a little more damage before halftime here. Pelvey back to punt. And the Jackets maybe get one more try here, but the way things going, maybe they'll get three more tries. Who knows? Back deep is Johnson standing at his own 10. There's the snap, healthy. Whoa. Again, a slow delivery on the on the punt. Takes it at the eight yard line. So Defiance will have 92 yards to go with four minutes or three minutes and 58 seconds left to go in the half. Be nice to take that whole time and punch one in right before half because we get the ball to start the second half too. Of course, if we do it in the next 10 seconds, that'd be all right too. <laughs> 
uh, the kind of offense that Defiance has come out today with the no huddle. Uh, it's like been, both teams have been running a two-minute offense the whole game. So it really doesn't change anything just because it's a longer way to go and in a few minutes on the clock. You can basically stay in your same offensive plan you've had for the whole day. This is the offensive series we saw down here uh, when we were at the 24-yard line. We had two tight ends and Jenner in the backfield. This is when we, we scored with uh, Aaron in the corner. So they're getting one-on-one -on -one coverage when they do that. They also may just want to get a couple of runs out here to see where they can go. That's Shane Smith. Fumbled the ball, popped it out. And it's a touchdown. Number 21, uh, Joy Owens recovered the fumble. Shane Smith, first time in the backfield today, took a huge pop at about the nine. A ball flew out to the five. It was knocked forward into the end zone, and Joey Owens pounced on it. So what turned out to, to be a stop by the Jacket defense turned out to be a touchdown for the Anderson defense. And they go up now 32 to 14, and that was a... A tough play for the Jackets. Going for one on the extra point. Schnee belt. Spotted. Booted. And that one's through. Oh, 33-14. And that's a 19-point lead. Now, this one we thought we were going to get a chance to go down and cut it to five. It goes up to 19. 19. A 14-point swing there. So that ball flew out of there about five feet up into the air. So that was, yep. a, that was a huge hit. Helmet right on the ball, and uh, strange things happen when... Uh, with that shape of football, and this one popped straight up the air, went about five yards backwards. And when the defense is rushing, the offense is heading the other direction. They're about the only ones that can recover those kind of uh, fumbles. Jackets need to get uh, something positive here right before the half. Um, take a little of the momentum away. You can tell Anderson's now feeling uh, feel, got the got the big mo on their side right now. Schnee belt, good kick. Hokers takes it at the 17 yard line. Going to the right. Cuts up, gets out to the 30 yard line. First and 10 jackets. From their own 30, 344 left to go. And I'd say this is a pretty crucial drive right here. Well, what's important about this drive is to get a few first downs. Um, if they come up throwing the ball and throw incompletions at this point, uh, it's likely Anderson's going to get the ball back with time on the clock. So uh, Defiance got to make some completions, make some positive things happen on offense, move the ball, get, and uh, you know, run the clock down to halftime. Minfield in the backfield. Shotgun formation. Four wide. Minfield looks out. Jendron takes it at the 28. Gets it to the 30, 31 yard line. Uh, but a gain of one. He had a slow down and catch that. He couldn't catch it in stride and, and keep running on that. Because uh, he had a lot of room, but he had to turn around. And it's a one yard gain. Schmidt and Brown out to the left. Gator and Oakers out here to the right. Minfield back to pass. Long pass. And uh, Oakers, or uh, Gator, passes to Gator, defended by number 29. David Fuller, 5'7", defensive back from Anderson, Ohio, or Anderson, Indiana here. Third and nine. Gator was looking for a penalty there. Uh, he was being uh, just played pretty good defense there, inside out. The 
official timeout now. Now they start to play clock again. Three wide to the left, one to the right. Third and nine. Yeah, like you said, a big play right here. Need to get the first down. Minfield. Good catch by... Oh, they're saying he didn't get it. Nope, it bounced out. Yes, it did. Low ball. He uh, may have been about a half a yard short anyway. Went deep, curled back. Uh, ball was thrown low. Fourth and nine. Dustin Christian back deep for the Ravens. Stand ball. Back on his own 15. Good snap. Nice punt. Christian takes it on his own 32. Tries to get outside. Malcolm. Nice tackle. Tried to rip the ball out there. It's a good, good defensive play. Malcolm had the middle and he stopped uh, Christian right there. 32 yard line. Anderson's on the 32. They have 250 left to go in the first half. And I'm sure they'd like to stick one more in and say defiance this game is over. Well, right now with their offense and the way it's been going, they can they don't feel bad running the ball to Kimmel. He's been doing a good job getting the positive yardage. Um, and yet they can throw a lot of things at the, the defense yet in terms of their screens. Uh, they haven't gone downfield that much uh, in the second quarter. Um, and, um, you know, they may not feel like they have to with 250. They can use their timeouts. Uh, they got a lot of options yet. So no backs this time. First time, no backs. Steal. Shotgun. There's a screen blocked down by number 50, Dewar. Chad Dewar. Uh, got that screen, so they had good rush on, and the linebacker uh, Dewar had enough uh, sense to look for that screen coming across. Keeping your hands up, big, big uh, uh, part of rushing the quarterback. Get your paws up in the air. Uh, you don't know if he just will throw it right in the middle of your hand, and uh, you can knock it down. So second and ten, three wide to the left. Sipe, Gill, Osball, Smith out to the right, along with no backs again. I think they just want to see what's happening. There's a pass across the middle, incomplete, intended for Ospa. And again, uh, Jackets uh, brought Sattler in on a blitz. The safety coming in. Up, oh, interception. They're calling it interception. What? The uh, pass is across the middle. Mike uh, the, Malcolm got it. The two receivers were doing a crossing pattern across the middle. The umpire got in the way of the receivers. And uh, the w one referee, now they're calling it off. The one referee did signal defiance ball. And now the other guy, the others uh, come in, wave it off, make it third down and 10. Would they have been calling that uh, referee interference or something? No, or? no, it was simply a matter of they thought they, defiance was trying real hard to convince them that they had scooped the ball before it hit the ground. Uh, the one umpire side judge came in from the side and did signal defiance ball. I, I thought it clearly hit the ball. <laughs> then they had their little confab. And now it's Anderson, third and ten. Third and ten. Big down, though. Hayden blitzing. Oh, Gill's got him beat by a lot. <laughs> Gill had... Uh, Gill had... Uh, the D-back beaten by five yards. Uh. And it was, again, with all the short stuff that they've been throwing, now they take their opportunity to go downfield. Very effective. It was the right call at the right time. I think it's real important for the Jackets to keep them out of the end zone here. It's 2.30 left to go, plenty of time. They waited to the right time, and that was it. We had uh, Jackets blitzing. Man coverage. Man coverage, and it wasn't even close there. Steele, Kimmel back in the backfield this time. Throws it out to the left. This time tackled by uh, Sattler. Number 37. Josh Sattler. They just announced Joel Steele became the fifth leading passer in the history of Indiana football. There's been some pretty good passers come through uh, Indiana, uh, like um, Bob Greasy in Purdue, Antron Randall L. out of Indiana, Steele back to pass, 
Intercepted by Cronkite. And so Cronkite, who got burned on the long pass, picks up the uh, tip drill off of Gill and a big defensive play for the Jackets. 1.30 left to go in the first ha half. Jackets get the ball on their own 20-yard line. And uh, that was a big play. Steele hit uh, Gill right on the numbers. Gill uh, had to go back a little bit for it, but the ball popped up, and Cronkite made the interception. He had a, he tripped over Gill, or he might have had a big uh, big gain after that. Four wide left. Schmidt out to the right. Minfield shotgun by himself. Schmidt was going down and up, and uh, Corey thought he was coming across the middle. They had one and one on uh, Cox out there, or Fox. And they were looking to use it. It's just that uh, the quarterback and the receiver weren't on the same page. Same formation. They leave him out there. Safety, 21, is cheating over that way. This time he throws it out. Oh, Schmidt uh, got it. Couldn't hold on to it. He had it. Looked like he just lost it on the way down. Aaron's a little upset with himself there. A lot, those, there. a lot of those pass plays are set up where uh, the quarterback and receiver are supposed to know. Uh, it's not necessarily that one's going to go this this way or that way, but it depends on what the defensive back's doing. And sometimes they can just get a misread by one or the other if they see if they think the back is doing one thing and, and the receiver thinks he's doing another. Casey Johnson and he dropped dropped the ball there. They might have got the first down there. Looked like it was set up to be a pretty good play and get past the chain. Uh, the markers over there on the sideline. Um, a drop ball results in a fourth down and a punt situation for defiance. So they still got a minute 17 left to go. The coverage team is very important in the situation. And a good snap. Stand ball. Good snap. Wobbler down the middle. Gets a roll. Kristen lets it go. Malcolm downed it at the 34. He's saying that Kristen actually touched it, but that's not the case. So they got a uh, minute seven left to go, first half. Anderson gets the ball. Real effective punt in the ball. That it was on the ground. It rolled. At no chance for return. Yeah. Uh, it makes them have to go uh, uh, 66 yards uh, if they're trying to get in the scoring to score a touchdown. Yeah, that's a 46-yard punt there. They got three out here to the left. Came along the backfield, one wide to the right. 33 14, 107 left to go in the first half. Wouldn't be surprised if this was a draw to Kimmel, Kimmel to start this uh, drive right here. See what they get. Decide whether they want to keep going. Nope. Steele heaves it up. Incomplete. Uh, Kylan was right there with Smith. Uh, Smith made the catch, but he was uh, one foot out of bounds. So second and 10. Steele laid that in there nicely. Nice ball. Number 65, uh, Andrew Prater from Bluffton, Indiana. Looks like he's injured a little bit. And uh, Anderson, Anderson takes a timeout. Time yep. 102, remaining in the first half, 33-14 Anderson on a beautiful day in Anderson and on Anderson's homecoming. Well, we got to stop down here when we needed it. We just didn't get to get it going down the other way. But if we can stop and we do get the ball at the beginning of the second half here. Anderson's deciding if they want to continue to try to um, throw it.
throw the ball downfield? Um, or is it time to run the ball, have the clock run a little bit, maybe pop a, a long run in there to help them decide what to do on the next play? But um, if they feel like uh, they're taking real advantage of the defiance defense, I wouldn't expect, you know, you could expect them to come out and chunk the ball around and still the last minute and two seconds of the half. Well, they also realize, though, that if you keep throwing it up, uh, defiance may still have time to get the ball back. Pass out to Kimmel. 30, 35, 40. 44. He's got, uh, he's real close to the first down, probably has it. 50 seconds and counting, stayed in bounds. They're going to probably call timeout for, nope, they're just going to give him third down. Third oh. down about the length of a football. So I'd watch for the quarterback sneak here. That's what they've run on these before. And now they're going to take officials Take one time. more time. It's officials time to measure. Right. I imagine the coach had them do that so they could figure out what play they're going to run next. Not a bad idea. You're going to bring them all the way, bring the markers all the way across the field. Coach is saying it's that close, you got to measure. In the meantime, the offensive coordinator is figuring out what play they're going to run. And probably more than one play. A whole series. 40, 40. And it's not a first down, but it's a lot closer than what they said. It's only a couple chain links from a first down. So the Anderson coach had every right to ask for that one. 35.9 seconds left to go in the first half. 33-14. Jackets have come up with two big turnovers in this second quarter. They're looking for the quarterback sneak. At third and one, I wouldn't be half surprised if they'd pull it out and go long here. Nope, he's got it, first down, out to the 45. So Anderson at their own 45, picks up the first down. That took off five ticks off the clock. They stopped the clock to reset the change for the first down. They bring an extra linebacker in. Zach Falmer goes off and they bring a linebacker in. And Anderson calls timeout. And that may be their last one. There's nothing on the scoreboard for that though. Here in the background, the rhythmic beating is a uh, some makeshift drums that the Anderson student body puts together, and um, and they're pretty good at uh, getting the rhythm down together. It's quite an entertainment factor here at the at the ball game. And the drums are made out of looks like a plastic trash can kind of situation. Yeah, so, so they, they recycled the containers. Now 30 seconds left. Can almost expect a couple outs just to see if they can break them, but then maybe go on one long. They've got Sipe and Smith wide to the right. Ospo and Gill out here to the left. Kimmel in the backfield. Steele almost looked like he went in motion. Looking back over to the left. Dodges one player. He's to the 45, 50. Hit, doesn't get out of bounds. Good tackle by Mike Hayden. Kept him in, bounced, and that, and uh, Anderson did call. That should be their last time out then. So it's uh, second down. He got eight yards on that play. Yeah, I think your uh, head coach just might have put the bug in the quarterback's ear and saying, uh, got to get it out of bounds on that one. Uh, <laughs> save us the timeout. Um, 19 seconds remain. And for them, that's a lot of time yet. Uh, but they got to go to the sidelines now because if they go too deep, uh, they will stop the clock to, to move the chains on a first down, so that's an advantage. They can spike the ball, those kind of things. But um, for a team that runs a lot of screens, uh, things like that, I would expect them if they go deep to go down the sideline like they did on the big play on the last scoring drive they had. Um, 
but uh, we're about ready to find out here. No timeouts remaining for Anderson. 19 seconds ago. Sipe and Smith the out to the yard line. Yep. Sipe and Smith out to the right. Kimmel in the backfield. Steele and a shotgun. Has Gill in a slot this time. It's the first time I've seen him in there. So they may be looking right down the middle on this one and just going for it all. They have Oss ball out here to way out wide to the left. Steele looks left. He's got uh, intercepted by Cronkite, his second one. Gets a couple blocks. Cuts it back up down to the 37-yard line. There's five seconds left to go. Defiance may call a timeout and go for it. Or since they get the ball right at the beginning of the second half, they may just down it and go on in. But I think when you're down 33 to 14, you may just try it. You throw one up, see what happens, maybe get a defensive penalty and uh, get you a little closer to one more attempt into the end zone. Uh, but uh, why not with five seconds left? Even if an interception, the play will take longer than five seconds, assuming you make the tackle if there is that kind of play. So they had that pretty well defended. Have Gator and Schmidt out here on the left, Jenner in the backfield. They have Brown and Johnson out on the right. Minfield up behind center. I think if they were going to throw it long, they'd be in the shotgun. No. Goes to Brown. 40, 45, 50. And that's the end of the first half. So he got 10 yards. I may even have been considered a run also. And so at halftime, it's Anderson 33, Defiance 14, and we'll be back at the beginning of the second half. you believed in me? I can believe in me. I can believe in me. Because you pushed me to be better. I learned to push myself. Push myself. myself. Because you showed me respect. I respect others. I respect myself. To everyone who helped the young men and women of the United States Air Force discover that the greatest force of all is inside of themselves, we thank you. And more importantly, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. They thank you. Someday, I'll be a ballerina, just like them. And this will be my stage, where I twirl and float and swirl. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. Uh, we're back here for the beginning of the second half. Uh, I'll give you some first half stats. 18 first downs for Anderson to seven for Defiance. 290 yards passing for Anderson, 123 for Defiance. Um, rushing yards 70 for Anderson, 16 for Defiance. Uh, time of possession 19 for Anderson and 10 for Defiance. That's not going to work if you're going to keep doing that. Uh, Defiance had two fumbles lost. Anderson had one. Defiance had two inter had uh, inter made two interceptions while Anderson had one interception. Um, Defiance, uh, when they got in the red zone, were two of two. Anderson, when they got in the red zone, were three of three. So uh, what we've got is a 33 to 14 score. Uh, Defiance is going to get the ball for the second half. Uh, what are some of the keys for uh, a, the jacket comeback, Mark? Uh, I think the very first possession is going to be, uh, we'll set the tone. We've got to make the, something positive happen, uh, move the ball. Um, and hopefully score, because uh, th this big a deficit, you can't miss on too many opportunities, and it should start right here at the first possession, second half. Defensively, uh, you know, you're facing a team that uh, loves to throw the ball, a lot of short stuff. they they got to continue to defend the short, and then, uh, you know, when they've thrown it downfield a couple times, they've come up a couple of interceptions. So uh, it, it's almost like the short passing game is their rushing game. And uh, so you've got to defend that and then make them do something they're not as comfortable with, and that's uh, throw downfield a little bit. But uh, it starts on offense, taking advantage of uh, every opportunity, 
and uh, and uh, wouldn't hurt if we had a good field position to start with, like a good kickoff return right here. Okay. Well, we have Schneebolt uh, ready to start the kickoff for the second half. We have uh, Johnson and uh, Macbeth back uh, deep for the Jackets, and uh, 15 minutes are put back on the clock. And uh, this is uh, be a critical second half of football for the Jackets. And the ball falls off the tee. The drums are pounding. Homecoming crowd is ready to go. And uh, Jacket Faithful are looking for something to cheer about here as we start the second half. All right. Still a beautiful sunny day. And there's, he closes, boots it, nice kick. Going to be taken on the five yard line by Casey Johnson. 10, 15, 20, he's got a hole, 25, 30, 33 yard line. Casey showed a lot of acceleration when he saw that hole over there and gets up to the 33. Good return. It sets the, set the stage for the offense. Now they come out and Again, make something positive happen. Um, Got to get first down. Obviously, it's going to be key a lot of times. If, uh, if they're going to pass the ball, let's make a completion, keep it out of second and long and third and long. And if they're going to run the ball, uh, let's go ahead and pound it up there and get five yards in first down if we can. All right. Got Johnson out to the left, Schmidt to the right. They got uh, Zegda and Gendron in the backfield. It's the first time we've had two backs in the backfield all day. Double tight end. Johnson moves to the right in motion. Pitch out to Gendron. There's a good block. Cuts it up. Nice cut by Jenner, and he gets up to the 35. Pick up a three, second and seven. Defiance. Casey Johnson came back in, made a nice block on that linebacker. Defiance College comes out and uh, with the traditional fullback tailback situation and uh, giving Anderson something to think about. They run the sweep, try to get the fullback out in the corner. Uh, cut back inside. Three-yard gain, not a bad start. Now let's see what they, uh, they build off of that play. Twin receivers out here to the right, one to the left. Gendron again. It's out to the, oh, it looked like he was going to be hit right at the 35, and then he ducked under about three or four tacklers and gets up to the 38-yard line. Now well, it's going to be third down and four. So the Shack Jackets may want to be establishing a little bit of a run here, make those, pull those linebackers up, and then maybe get some stuff going down the middle. Two wide out to the left. Minfield and shotgun with two back. Johnson in motion to the right. Minfield. This time gives to Jenner and wide sweep. Cuts it up. He's going to be real close. Uh, 40. Linesman running in right on the 42. That's going to be a first down. Yep. We're a uh, great mark. Got us uh, the first down yeah, he we start to start things off. Excuse me. Uh, and did it on three running plays. He started to run in from this side about the 41 and a half, and they wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't have made it. But a good first down, that's the way to go. Schmidt and Johnson to the right, Brown to the left, Zegda, Gendron in the backfield. Pitch to Gendron, again, cuts it up. Gets out to the third, 45. So he got about three, second and seven. Completely different look in the first half when uh, we were spreading things out all over and and uh, throwing the ball uh, quite a bit. Threw it 22 times, I think, in the first half, 21 times the first half. Four straight running plays to open the second half. Brown and Johnson to the left, Schmidt out to the right. I formation behind Menfield, who's up behind the center. Second and seven. Gendron again, up to the 37, 38, or 47, 48. Picked up another uh, three. He's got to go to the going to be third down and four. Third and five, third and four. Running the ball effectively certainly sets up the possibilities of play action now. Gives those linebackers something else to think about and, um, and maybe an opportunity for the receivers to find a seam in the secondary. Yes. Fakes this time. Good catch. Laid it out there nice. Johnson pulled it in over his shoulder beautifully. Minfield laid that one in. It was a beautiful pass. Johnson caught it went down to the 34-yard line, 33-yard line. First and 10 jackets. Just what we were talking about. Again, respecting the run, the good play fake. Um, next thing you know, you, it's a little easier for those receivers to catch the ball when they're in, uh, you know, there's not three or four people between them and the quarterback. There's a Gendron. 
Down to the 30. Maybe into the 29, aren't I? They're saying second down. He got two yards. Second and eight. Anderson was saying they thought they had a fumble, but it was after the player whistle had already blown, so it's second and eight. Ball right at the 30-yard line. Even with running, they're still going in the no huddle, Mark. That's a lot to uh, prevent Anderson from, you know, getting the people they want in or changing their defenses. Minfield back to pass. Throws a long one down to Schmidt. Intercepted on the one yard line. He threw into double coverage. 21, Joey Owens was just sitting on that play and uh, Kristen, Dustin Christian, they had, uh, had pretty much Garen covered, but uh, Joey, Joey Owens just played uh, center fielder on that and went back and intercepted it on the one yard line. So Anderson has first and 10 from their own one, 11-25. They control the ball pretty well there, and it's coming up empty. Right now, the emphasis turns immediately to the defense to come up with a stop while they're deep in uh, their own territory. And uh, again, just try to get the ball back or create a uh, defensive touchdown. Be fine right here, too, with a fumble recovery or something to that effect. Now the line is in tight. Steals up behind center. Hands it to Kimmel in the backfield. Breaks it out. Gets out to about the six-yard line where Hayden and Cronkite make the tackle. Or no, uh, Malcolm and Cronkite. But he got six yards coming out of there. Good first down play for the Ravens. Gill out to the left. A little more breathing room. They go to the shotgun. Again, puts different kind of pressure on the defense. Steal out. Oh, he fumbled a ball. And it uh, looks like Defiance has got the ball. There it is. Uh, Highland comes up with the ball. It's first and 10 jackets on the 11-yard line. That was the turnover we were looking for right there. Got first down, in. jackets. Kimmel caught it. It was stripped out. It looked like 97. Uh, Pfefferly hit him, knocked the ball out. It bounded forward out to the 11, and I think Scott Highland had it. There they go. They're not set. As soon as they blow the whistle, there's nobody out there on Schmidt. Johnson's out here on the right. Two tight ends. Zeg Zegda in the backfield this time. Zegda by himself up the battle. Hits it at 10. Gets one yard. Second and 10. Second and, uh, oh, I guess he gave him, gave him about a yard and a half there. They got to go to the one and a half yard line. Petrick now in the backfield. First time in the game for him. Schmidt left, Johnson right. There's Hetrick. He's hit hard right at the 10, now down to the nine yard line. The defiance again trying to establish the fact that they can come straight ahead at Anderson. Um, not as successfully as they did the first three or four plays of the second half here. So uh, facing third and seven. Um, probably still in two down territory with down by 19. Um, so let's see what they're gonna do. They got bump and run, press coverage on the outside. Fakes this way. Hits the Oakers. Down to the three. He's uh, gonna be a yard and a half away. It's still a long time, long way to just pop it in there, but well-conceived play out to Oakers on a little down and out. Got to need about a yard and a half to get a first down. Certainly they're on the three yard line. They can look in the end zone. And the Jackets are gonna the call their first call. timeout. Timeout. Fourth down, a yard and a half. Well, I think it's critical to, that they get it in here. Where they're going over their options right now, they're, uh, they want to make sure that uh, they're down 19. A field goal doesn't really necessarily help them at all. Uh, puts them on, you know, two touchdowns, down by two touchdowns and two two-point conversion. So they're thinking seven right here, uh, really get back in the ball game a little bit. Um, um, and, and yet uh, it's a tough call, a yard and a half to go. Do you go back to your running game? Uh, I would think they'd like to put a little pressure on the perimeter, maybe have Minfield ro rolling out on the play fake, look for something short, in, something short in the end zone, something deep in the end zone. And if he sees that he can get the first down, let him run to the sideline. 
Well, they have Schmidt way out wide to the left. Jenrin is the only one in the back field. Hoker's tight end. Johnson out here to the right. He may be looking at the slant uh, to the top of the, uh, yeah, to got the left the, side. Got a lot of room out there. Minfield gives it to Jendron. He slithers forward. He's down. I think he's uh, where they're running in. I think. I think he got it in there. If he gets a good spot down to the, if they're talking like the one yard line, he's got it. Because it's a one and a half. Really made a good surge and uh, had a hole. Time out uh, for a measurement. Found it in there as best he could for a yard, yard and a half. So we're going to see. Just depends on. Uh, if the official marked it with his left foot or his right foot. Did not look like there was a great surge, but Gendron found a hole in there. Pretty big. Pretty big measurement. And he did not get it. They're a little short. So 918 left to go in the third quarter, and the jackets come up two chain links short. Well, we got a turnover a second um, a couple minutes ago. Um, didn't cash in like they'd like to, and now they're ready to have to find another way to get the ball back and uh, give it a, another opportunity for the offense to uh, score some. So Anderson gets the ball first and uh, ten from their own uh, one and a uh, uh, one and three quarter yard line. They have two wide right or left. Smith out to the right. Kimmel in the backfield. Steele up behind the center. He's hit pretty hard. Pfefferly uh, made a nice stop. They knocked him back in, stole the ball, but they blew the whistle before uh, Zaychak uh, or Highland came up with the ball. I don't think he, uh, he may have lost a little bit of, on that quarterback sneak. Second down. Pfefferly really blew the center right out of that play on that one. Look. Second and 10, 8.48 left to go. Referees looking at each other. The clock's running. Quarterback's getting a call from the sidelines. Up behind Sentinel again. Kimmel in the backfield. He's back to pass. Looks long. Oh, there's sight. First time they've thrown to the tight end since uh, Rupley went out. And uh, he had it on his hands, but just couldn't hold on to it. He ha had uh, Malcolm beat there by a step. Steele hit him pretty well, but he just couldn't hold on to it. It's third down. Third and ten. All right, here we go. Huge play for the Jackets. They got to keep him down in here. Steele, back to pass again. He looks out to his left. Oh, Rupley, or Ausball breaks the tackle. He ran right down the seam. Steele hit him beautifully, and he's out to the 48-yard line. Ryan Ausball. Huge play. Huge, huge play. Changes a lot of the momentum in this third quarter right now. Gives Anderson a lot more confidence on uh, where they're going. The, you know, Defiance had played pretty well defensively inside their five-yard line. All of a sudden, they're walking around with a little bit bigger swagger, thinking, hey, we got it where we want to now. Midfield, we can wide it, open up things again. Steele hit him right past uh, where Hayden had dropped. First and 10, Steele alone in the backfield. There's Smith. First time he's had the ball for a while since the first half. He gets it in 10 yards. And it's another Anderson first down at the Jacket 41-yard line. Back to their short screens and pops right along across the uh, line of scrimmage. Uh, turning into positive yardage just with the uh, running skill of the wide receivers. And I tell you right now, the Jackets look like they're, uh, the defense is holding their heads down a little bit, and they've got to pick it up and make one more play here, get it back to the offense. 7.55 left to go in the third quarter. 33-14 Anderson. Steal up under center. Drops back to pass. Finds Gill, beats Malcolm, makes a couple cuts. Tackled finally by Highland and then Malcolm cleaned up. But uh, that nice little slant across the middle down to the 20-yard line. Finds came with the blitz that time. Uh, the offensive line of Anderson picked it up. Gave quarterback plenty of time. And then it's just man-on-man -man coverage. Tough thing to do for a long period of time. And they found the receiver down the middle. 
Just switched uh, defensive backs there. Trayvon Macbeth is now in for Cronkite on the left cornerback. Oh, and he's got whipped. Nice pass, just lobbed it up. The gill ran by uh, the defensive back that just came in, and an easy touchdown, 39 to 14. And that swing in momentum from the one to the from uh, their own one to a touchdown there on that one big pass to Ospa, and then two big ones to Gill was a, a big change of momentum, and that may just be a little bit too much for the Jackets to get back from. 39-14, Schne Schneebolt. Spots it, boots it, and it's through. 40 to 14. Anderson is looking pretty good right now, and the Jackets just uh, seem to be making uh, mistakes at the wrong time or not being able to capitalize when they do uh, They do get the ball. Well, they had things going at least somewhat in their way when they recovered the fumble down there to the 12-yard line. Um, they come up short on fourth and one and a half. Uh, don't get the first down. Anderson turns that around to a big third and 10 situation. They come out to midfield, and they're off to the races again. 40 to 14, a lot of uh, uh, maybe too much to overcome in one half. But uh, now it's time to sort of hunker down, go back, play a lot of good offensive uh, football, run the ball like they did effectively the first uh, part of the second half here, and uh, try to create some things, get something positive out of the next uh, 22, 23 minutes of this ball game. Yeah, maybe they can figure they can get a couple touchdowns this quarter, and then uh, if they can get it down to 14 going into the fourth quarter, or 12, and get it up to 28 here. But the offense is going to have to get some positive things going and some consistency. They've had some good plays. They just haven't been able to sustain uh, sustain the good things they're doing. The tough part is they have to play mistake-free the rest of the way, and they haven't shown that ability to do that yet today. So um, something's got to change here unless the slide continues. Schneebelt, nice boot, deep boot to Johnson at the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, out to the 27-yard line, where the Jackets will take it first and 10 from their own 27. Pretty good coverage by Anderson. We've had a couple big returns in earlier games, and they've kept us, uh, I guess, 35 in, so we've had some good field position, but nothing big, nothing huge. All right, here we go. We've got Schmidt and Johnson out to the left. Okers and Brown out here to the right. Uh, Gendron in the backfield. Let's see what we got up our sleeves this time here. First and 10. Schmidt in motion. First time we've seen that all day. Gendron tackled by 41, Alex Siriani. Pull the lineman, kick out on the defensive end. You got to cut that back up inside that, um, and then get what you can out of it. Don't uh, don't dance too much. Just plow it up in there. Get your three or four yards. Lost a yard, but this time we lost a yard. Second and eleven. He's got uh, Johnson long. He's made to catch down to the 40-yard line. Beautiful touch. It's the second time he's made a nice pass to Johnson's. Caught it out at the Anderson 40-yard line. Big play. First down. He was covered. Johnson got him beat by a couple steps, and uh, Minfield laid it in perfectly. Beautiful pass. There could be a lot more throwing opportunities for Minfield this half if, uh, if they can try to mount this comeback. So. You know, a lot of the play action is not going to be as effective because Anderson thinking we're throwing all the time. There's Jennings. And got a little why, spot. That's why you, uh, every now and then, you can pop a run in there just to be, um, uh, to keep him honest. Ted Weaver gets up slowly. He's the right guy, or right tackle out there, number 63. Offensive line is George Venturella, center. Shea Beavers and Scott Staten are the guards. Ben Haas and Ted Weaver are the tackles. Four yards on first down, not a bad start. 
I formation on each side flanked out there. Gendron in the backfield. Gendron again. Pops it open. Makes a good tackle. 20, 15, 10, down to the six yard line. Good run by Jason Gendron. That's the same play they just ran, isn't it? Sure looked like it. And, you know, last time it was four yards. This time it's almost 40. So uh, sometimes it takes uh, just to continue to do it, continue to keep after it. But um, there's a lot of folks getting that, their necks are getting stiff with all the up and down this ball game's going as they keep having to watch from left to right and right to left as both teams' offenses are really moving the ball now. So it's first and goal from the six. Gives it to Jenner. Good cut back. He could get in. Good blocking by both receivers out there. Great. Jason Brown and Casey Johnson made some good blocks, and Gendron runs in almost untouched. Great decision. Uh, the started as a counter going backside. He cut it back to uh, what was really the front side of the play. Once the defense uh, looked like they had him hemmed in there for a second, he makes a great cutback and uh, really goes in untouched. So they got a well, touchdown back real quick, 40 to 20. Wilson in to boot the extra point. Stanball puts it down. Kick beautifully through. 40 to 21. Back down to 19. So 5.46 left to go in the third quarter. Jackets uh, return to favor. They're right back in the... Well, they're not right back in again. They need one more to do that. Let's see if we can get one more before the quarter and then uh, do the same thing in the fourth quarter. Certainly the quick touchdown does give you your offense confidence that they can go out and do it again next time. Um, boys, the uh, defense a little bit. They uh, feel like the offense will respond once they get the ball back. So uh, your defense comes out with a little more juice to them. They'll spring in their step and uh, we'll uh, see if they can put the clamps down on the uh, Anderson offense that has been extremely potent all day. Back deep for Anderson goes uh, Smith and Gill. Kurt Croy will be booting it off. Sets the tee down on his own 35. So the jacket defense and the kick return team are on, or kick, uh, kickoff team are on the break service here. Gets it. And Kirk Croy has it. It's an onside kick. He kicks it. He recovers it. First down jackets. He waited exactly until it went 10 yards. Picked the ball up. Big first play by Kirk Croy on an onside kick. He may have been the only one that knew that. Everybody else looked like they were running downfield. And Croy waited very patiently until it crossed the 45-yard line, jumped on it, and now with 5.46, the Jackets get the ball back. Unbelievable. That's a, you know, once-in-a-million type of play. Worked beautifully. Boy, it's Hope Springs, eternal, all of a sudden for the purple and gold. Schmidt and Oker's right. Johnson and Brown left. Gendron in the backfield. Minfield and the shotgun. Long count. Long play down. Oh, he throws it. Throws it out of bounds. Uh, Fox had uh, Brown pretty well covered down there. Second and ten. Looks like if they'd run skinny, the safety has to kind of stay in right in the middle of the field. If they'd run skinny post out here, they'd probably be all right. Same formation, Minfield. Changing the coverages, blocking schemes. Oh, Johnson had the ball flop out of his hand. On a little slant, Minfield hit him right in the numbers. The ball bounced out of Johnson's hand and right into number is that uh, 28, Mike Baker. And Baker said, whoop, that ball was almost handed off to him. Turnover right there. Key mistakes again. Uh, and uh, just as exciting it was a minute ago to recover the onside kick, equally deflating to lose a turnover like that. Well, Anderson has it at the Jackets 30 yard line, just like that. Steele back to pass. He's looking left. Throws it out there. Good hit. Kimmel was hit by uh, 
Sattler out there. Sattler had that uh, little screen pass red. Kimmel gets two yards, second and eight. Steele was looking left out here to Gill, but uh, Macbeth had him pretty well covered that time. It was Macbeth who got burned on the last one, and uh, Macbeth had Gill covered pretty well right there. Steele in the shotgun, second and eight. Back to pass. Little shuttle pass up to the middle. Kimmel gets down to about the 13 in the first down. Got a lot of different plays they've run, and uh, every time it thinks like we're ready to make the stop, they've pulled one more out and figure a way to get down the field. Got everybody backing up, thinking pass. Get the linebackers dropping back and hit that little shovel pass inside. And at that point, your offensive lineman can run downfield and be blocking when he catches the ball. So a very effective play. Steele looks left again. Plenty of time. He might have caught it. Uh, Trayvon McBeth read that play and almost picked it off. Did they call it a catch or what they call it? Yeah, it looks like he called it a catch because it was a two-yard loss. All right, so it's a catch. Uh, Gill and or yeah, Alexander Gill and Trayvon McBeth fought that out. Gill ended up with the bobble. Trayvon almost made a great play there. Steal up behind center. Looks to his right. To Osball. Nice catch. Tackled by Sat Sattler. Number 37, Sattler. Sattler's made two good plays on those little screen passes out there. He's sitting right on top of them. About a four yard gain, third and eight. 3.52 left in the third. Big, big, big play right here. Osball and Gill out on the left. Smith wide to the right. Osball was being covered by the linebacker, Dewar, and that has the same play he scored on the touchdown out here before. They get they get uh, two out there. Coverage was, uh, Gill was covered by the cornerback, and Osball just ran by the linebacker. It's, uh, it's about matchups. They got one they liked when they have to have a linebacker cover uh, uh, a really good receiver like Osball, and um, uh, it turns out to the big advantage for the Ravens. 46-21, so the Ravens come back. Schneebelt. Spots, boots, ooh, low liner. But he makes it through the center. Looked like he slipped when he hit that ball, but 47-21. Playing with a lot of confidence on offense right now, Anderson wow. is, and uh, it shows on the scoreboard. Paul Spall's having a big game. He's had some big receptions. I think he may have three touchdowns now. You see, the cheerleaders aren't doing the push-ups anymore. <laughs> now that there's 47 of them to do. On a day like today, you'd have to do, uh, you'd have to have some calculus to figure out how many they actually did yeah. by the end of the day. So. 347 left. Schneebelt ready to boot the ball again. Trayvon McBeth, Casey Johnson back. And Jackets obviously need to score as soon as possible. There's the boot by Schneebelt. Deep kick. Johnson on the 5, 10, 15, 25, 30, 35, out to the 40-yard line, Casey Johnson. Good return. So they get it out to the 40. They're another good field position. The Jackets got to keep it coming. 
Schmidt wide left. Covered by Fox. Got some matchup they may want to look at. Minfield. 40, 45, 50. He, oh, he almost broke the last tackle. Number 28, uh, Mike Baker, who had the interception after that uh, on the last drive, caught him at the Anderson 46-yard line. So it's a pretty good tackle. Otherwise, Jenrod might have gone all the way through. Good start to the series. Pass out to uh, number 80, Ricky... Uh, Calverly, Ricky Calverly, ball was thrown inside. Uh, Ricky was hoping that it would be outside. Did not get the interception there, but almost had it. Second down and 10 for the Jackets. Again, a timing play that wasn't quite timed up. Zegda and Gendron in the backfield on second and 10. Gives off to Gendron, finds a quick hole up there, gets down to the 43 yard line. Second, third down and seven now. That was a great cut. I mean, he went from about 60% uh, straight forward speed to stop on a dime, make a sharp right, and hit up field for a three-yard gain. Got Brown and Schmidt out to the left, Johnson to the right, Zegda, Gendron, and the eye formation behind Minfield. Brown comes to the right in motion. Gendron out to the right, good blocking. Oh, he's met, no gain. I really think the Jackets, um, with 2.48 left, I don't know that they... Maybe a flag thrown in the middle of all that. Uh, yeah, there seems to be a flag right at the 45-yard line. Oh, a flag at the 45. It Maybe. Came, it came after the play was over. It's against Anderson, uh, Casey Johnson saying. It might be a, some kind of a personal foul in there. Would be a big play because we had zero. Dead ball foul, so it was after the play was over. Personal foul on Anderson. It's a 15-yard penalty then, uh, so that's going to take us down to about the 30, 27, 28-yard line, and where it'll be first and 10. Not sure what happened there, but... That was a big hit by Anderson, and um, there was probably a little discussion how good a hit it was. And, and uh, officials have heard enough of it and uh, pulled the flag. All right. Got Schmidt and uh, Brown out to the left. Johnson way out wide to the right. Gender and only back. Minfield up behind center. First and 10 from the 28. Now somebody jumped. One of the linemen looked. Might have been number 75. Shea Beaver. Hey, he wiggled his tail feathers a little bit and got called for illegal motion. So we go 15 down and uh, five back. But makes it first and 15. Jackets really can't afford to keep doing that. They got to get in and score. And Forty-seven twenty-one, two twenty-two left to go. First and fifteen. Jackets. Gendron gets a hole. Gets uh, five yards. Well, gets four yards back. So it's second and 11. Keeping those linebackers honest. Yeah, again, probably setting something up for the play action. Jonathan Mock for Anderson runs off, and number uh, 60, Isaac Shepard, comes on. Just under two minutes left in the third quarter. Second and 11. Schmidt and or, uh, Johnson. Brown wide to the right, Schmidt to the left. Zegda, Gendron in the backfield. Pitch out to Gendron. Couple good blocks out there. Yeah, got some good blocks uh, from the ends. He gets to the... Run to the short side. Uh, 
down to the 27 yard line. They got um, got outside a little bit, but uh, you just run out of real estate sometimes when you run the short side. But a good uh, three or four yard gain there. Oh, yeah, so third and eight. Third and eight. All right, they got Johnson wide to the right. Oker's in at the tight end. Uh, Brown and Schmidt out to the left. Jenner in the backfield with Menfield. Menfield barks out the signals. Shotgun. Looks left. No, looks at the screen to Gendron. He's got to 25, 20, 15. Good run. Broke a nice tackle there. Ran right through the tackle of uh, number 11 for Anderson. Aaron Gluff. Gets uh, the first down for the, for the Yellow Jackets. That's a big play by Gender. Nice hard running there. And they go into a huddle this time. 122 to go, 47-21. Johnson and Okers to the right. Brown and Schmidt to the left. Gendron again, 15, 10, five, four, three, one. Down to the one yard line. Can bring in Calverly. Defense got spread out again with the four wideouts. Popped it in there off tackle. Made a nice cut back to the middle of the field. Gets down to the one yard line. It's a nice run. So they got uh, one back. Schmidt touchdown. Little slant. They had him wide out there. There was that was no contest. So good call. Uh, took advantage of the defense. Spread uh, Schmidt way out to the left and uh, ran the slant. It was right on the money. A good pass by Minfield and uh, Yellow Jackets score again. 47-27-101. Wilson spotted, booted. Beautiful kick, 47-28. Schmidt second touchdown of the day, 101 left in the third quarter. Well, they need 47 to get. 47-28. Well, we need to get a stop yet. We're down back down to 19. That's where we started the second half at. And Need to make some headway here. So as bad as it seemed at times, uh, we were playing even with them, but that's not going to work. We're going to need to. We got to be more than even. Got to be more than even by about 19 here. So we're going to need to get some stops. And the offense is almost going to have to score from here on out every time they get the ball. That's it. And I'm guessing that Anderson's not going to be surprised by the onside kick this time, if it was to happen. They seem a little more prepared for a shorter <laughs> kick. This time. They're all standing on the 45 this time. In fact, they have one guy on the line. That's going to be offside. Oh, you moved back. Yeah, they had, uh, Anderson had one guy standing on the 45-yard line. That would have been offsides. And there's a good long boot. Smith takes it on the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Breaks open, 30, 35. I don't think they're going to get him. Croy is pretty fast, but Smith is gone. And jumps into the end zone. A 95-yard kickoff return. <laughs> He had a big one at the beginning of the game and uh, just a, a second one right there. A beautiful kick. Able to run him into the sideline the last time, but this time Hyman had Croy in the middle of the field and uh, had a little too much speed for Kurt on that play. A big hole up the middle. Some beautiful blocking by the Anderson front wave wedge. Uh, Schneebolt again out there. He probably hasn't been on the field as much since... Uh, the 1932 Olympics. Spotted, booted, it's good. 
So 54 to 28, back up to a 26 point lead. Just like that. <laughs> I don't think he was touched either, Mark. I don't think anybody even laid a hand on him that whole run. Just when you're trying to figure out the, the momentum of this game and, and the defiance maybe making some good plays, getting back into it every time uh, from turnovers to, uh, to, to onside kicks that defiance would get. Anderson turns it right around with a kickoff return or a turnover coming right back at Defiance. So it's uh, been a frustrating day uh, in terms of trying to make to mount any kind of comeback of, of real substance because you keep giving up that other touchdown right away. All right. So we've been in this position quite a lot. This is a, this play for both sides. A lot of kickoffs happening today. So it seemed like Schneeball was just kicking off a little bit ago, and there's been also there's been a two touchdowns in between that. 47 ticks left to go in the first quarter or a third quarter. Anderson 54, Defiance 28. There's the boot. This one's a nice long boot. Trayvon Macbeth on the five-yard line. 10, 15, 20, 25. Hit it to 27-yard line by number 40, Westhoffer. He's been in on a lot of plays, offense and defense. So the Jackets get the ball at their own 27-yard line. Looking up the uh, tall side of the mountain right now, down by uh, 26 points uh, with just 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Yellow Jackets come out. Johnson and Schmidt out on the left. Brown out on the right. Zegda, the only back in there. No, now Jenner's running out. We got uh, two backs back there with uh, Minfield. Hands it to Jenner, and he's tackled for a loss. Just great penetration by the Anderson defense in that play. Really uh, disrupted play from the very beginning. Um, now Losses. second, second and, uh, 17. Not the way you wanted to start out. Uh, draw. 15 seconds left. Uh, they don't have to run this, but, and they won't. They aren't going to run it. They'll be going to the fourth quarter with it 54 to 28. Jackets down by 26 points, and... Stranger things have happened, but the way things are going, I don't think it's going to right now. Well, it'd be difficult to score four times uh, in the fourth quarter unless uh, Anderson decides to help us out. Uh, but uh, it'll be, uh, like I said, a, a, a long uphill battle. Again, just try to get in there, make some positive things happen. Uh, maybe something miraculous is on, uh, in store, but uh, everything would have to fall into place for, uh, for the Yellow Jackets the rest of the way. Here we go. They're giving away pizzas down here. That's why the fans are really excited. Okay, so it's second and then uh, 17. As we start the fourth quarter. Jackets have two out to the, to the right, one to the left. Gender in the backfield with Menfield. Menfield's in the shotgun formation. So here we go. We're ready to start the fourth quarter. Minfield ready for the snap. There he's back to pass. A little wide receiver screen to Johnson. Slips under one tackle, but uh, down at the 20 for a gain of zero. Third, still third and 17. And uh, what do they got to come up with here? I mean, it's something deep down the middle, but uh, 21 Owens has made some good plays down the middle. He's a pretty good defensive back. He's a taller kid. And uh, 
Okay, 6-3-2-10. Nice side def uh, safety, actually. Uh, Menfield with Gendron. Oker's out here to the left with Johnson. Looks right. Rolls right. Menfield out to the 25. To Gets out to the 28-yard line. Uh, fourth down and uh, about nine. Or no, fourth and about 12. Oh, 26 yard line. Blake Stanball, the punter from uh, Defiance, or from Swatton High School, uh, averaging about 30, 36, 37 yards a punt. Having a nice punting day. Averaging 45, I'm sorry. And there's another nice high punt. Good roll. Beautiful punt down at 30, 25 yard line where Sattler will down it. Sam Ball's done a nice job of kicking away from uh, the return and uh, all day long he's been uh, the benefactor of some excellent uh, rolls on the ball after the punts hit the ground. That was a 47 yard punt. So averaging, averaging over 45 yards a punt well, is a good, good deal. But it's very imperative that the Jackets do not allow any more scores here. If they want to have a chance, they're gonna, they got to stop. Get a turnover or something. A defensive score would uh, almost be a necessity in, uh, in this comeback. So Steele up behind the center, Kimmel. Steele's telling him where to go, so he's going to get the ball. Well, right back to pass, Steele. Oh. Intercepted by Scotty Highland, 20, 15, down to the 13-yard line. Highland was sitting on that play. It was out to Smith, Hyman Smith that time, and Highland just stepped in front and made the interception, and we almost called that. It was a situation where a game of inches, the quarterback threw the ball just to the inside of the receiver, and that's where our uh, defensive back was sitting, waiting for that to happen. You know, if he throws that to the outside shoulder, it's a tougher play for our DB to make, and he may not be able to, but uh, when he let it go, I'm sure the quarterback wished he had it back. All right, so we have Brown way out to the right. High formation. Schmidt to the left with Johnson in a slot on the left. Go, 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 go. They're not lined up. Go. There's Gendron, 15, 10, down to the 8, 7-yard line. Nice blocking out there. Uh, he got about um, 6 yards, so it's going to be 2nd and 3 or 4. It's a great first down run. It's 6 yards, uh, tough yardage down close. Makes a good sweep, cuts it inside, gets what he can out of it. All right, Brown and Johnson wide to the right. Schmidt alone on the left. Oker's the tight end on the left. Gendron alone back. He checked off at the line of scrimmage here. Oh, he, Schmidt made the play, but uh, Fox uh, knocked him out of bounds. He released to the outside. The pass uh, forced him just a little bit further outside. He, he caught the ball, but one foot was on the white instead of on the green. Out of bounds. Yep, nice throw out there, though. But they were on the short side of the field. Didn't have as, quite as much room to work. Got Brown and Johnson out to right. Third down and four. Big play. There's Gendron. Gets up there, down to the three. It's going to be fourth and one. He didn't get it. They're marking him at about the four-yard line. This one's pretty close. They might, they might want to measure this and uh, give us a chance to uh, get our thoughts together on what's uh, the next call. Here. They're bringing the big backs in. and uh, They aren't measuring. Uh, every now and then we'll run a, a Maryland eye here. We'll put uh, the full back. Uh, but uh, no, just straight eye. Two, two tight ends, wide right and left. Gendron in the backfield. Unbalanced left. Last time they did this, they ran right. Showing some speed. He's got to get to the corner. And he does. Yes. He got inside the four down to the two and a half yard line, and he got the first down. Very good. It's a numbers game. They line up with unbalanced uh, to the left, forcing Anderson to put more of their defenders on the left side. They take your speed guy and head him to the corner. Makes the first down. 
Big, big play. Gendron showed some nice speed out there. And in fact, after he got hit, got one more yard and staying in bounds. Calverly, wide to the right, Schmidt to the left. Two big receivers out there. Gendron in the backfield. This time to Calverly. He's got it. It was also holding on 29. Oh. They got the touchdown. Let's see what the flag's all about. Catch was by Calverly. Their defiance seems to be pretty happy with the call. Yeah. It was defensive holding, I believe. Calverly gets a touchdown. He just tossed it up there, and uh, Christian never turned around. So, score for the Jackets 54 34. Touchdown. Hey, so Wilson. Spotted, booted, knocked it through. 54-35, we're back to 19. So here we go. 12 minutes, 13 seconds left to go. Defiance keeps coming back and uh, making it interesting. Big turnover there, Scott Island interception, and then the uh, jackets converted on. Okay, here we go. Minfield in a shotgun. Throws to Johnson, gets a good block by Brown. 40, 45, out of bounds. Out to the 47, first down. Little hit screen that uh, worked real effectively as they got the uh, about 12, 14 yards on the play, first down. Keeping uh, Anderson thinking about this comeback a little bit. Uh, nice play on first down. All right, here we go. There's nobody out there. They don't. They aren't. They could get out of the huddle and run some plays while Anderson's still in the. There's Schmidt, 45. Jumps over, gets out to the 48, and gets about one yard. Tried the same thing the other side. Got a couple. Zegda comes in. Aaron got one yard. Zegda and Jendren in the backs. Second down and nine. Johnson running over to the right. Their jackets are on their own 49-yard line. He's got Gendron on the deep draw. Good running. Down to the 46-yard line, third and three. Big play. Gendron is running hard in his fourth quarter. Good draw play. Got him uh, about seven yards. Two plays to get a yard, to get about three yards here. All right. Zegda and Gendron in the backfield. They are blitzing. Gendron breaks it through down to the 35 yard line. First down to 35. Closer and closer to breaking one of those. Zegda must have made a huge block in there because they had everybody blitzing. He hit a seam, and uh, sometimes when you hit that, they go all the way. Schmidt and Johnson right. Zegda, Gendron in the backfield. Brown up here to the left. Minfield up behind center. Johnson motion to the left. Minfield, pitch out. Oh, they got the sweep to Gendron. And he's hit and then dropped for a loss of about three. They're watching for that uh, sweep. Number six for the Ravens, uh, Jeff Jones, outside linebacker, uh, made a good play. Read it well, strung it out, and made a play. Now it's second and 12, second and 13. Schmidt and Johnson right, Brown to the left. Minfield up behind center. Johnson in motion again. Looks like the same play. So draw to Gendron. Hit by uh, six again. Now it's third and ten. Again, trying to pop one in there that uh, catches the defense. Uh, of course, now uh, third and ten, you'd, you'd be thinking uh, the defense is probably playing on play, uh, play action or some kind of pass. and. 
probably should be a 10 yards tough uh, tougher to hold with a uh, passing uh, with a running play they get one on one out there on the right midfield goes right. to the left Brown had it in his hands and dropped it it was a shorter pass though uh, he would only had about four yards or three yards on that play Fourth down, now they gotta go more downfield. No uh, four yard passes won't make it on uh, fourth and 10. No. Roger Shingledecker comes in. It's first time on, uh, he's been on the field all year. Wide left and right. Menfield and a shotgun. Rolls and throws it. Throws it away. He's thrown to Gendron on the screen pass. And, um, I think he panicked a little bit there. He felt the rush and decided, you know, trying to get, avoid the sack. But uh, uh, he has to throw that ball for somebody to catch, even if it's uh, the other team 10, 12 yards downfield. All right. 8.04 left to go. Defense is back out there looking for another stop. Or a turnover. Almost now we got to get a turnover. Kimmel gets about two yards. Big tackle. By number 12, 30, Wormlinger. Get three, second and seven. They, I think Anderson feels they don't need to score any more points. They're just going to try to run the clock yeah, out. That, that's exactly what they should be doing. Uh, got a really effective running back in there, handing the ball five, six times in a row. Um, see if uh, defense can uh, stop them and then make us come uh, long distance uh, in terms of an offensive series. There's Kimmel again. Diddy gets him. No gain. Good play by Diddy and uh, Wormlinger again in there. So third and ten, and the Jacket defense is. Uh, rise into the occasion here. Well, they're expecting the run now, so as soon as they see that draw look, they can start moving forward since they're not really thinking that they're going to throw the ball much. Here they go. They got the two wide, two left. Steel on a little. Inside screen. Oh, Smith caught it in stride. I tell you what, Steele throws that ball out there so the runner can catch it and keep going in stride, and that was a beautiful play for Steele. Down to the 44-yard line of the Jackets, 6.53 to play, 54-35, Anderson. Just really don't think you'll see much uh, downfield at all, the safe screens. Um, Kimmel running the ball, that's the way it should be uh, the rest of the way for Anderson. Draw. And there's Kimmel. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage, gets about one. Whole defensive line gets him. Fulmer's in there. Diddy. And there, second and eight. Clock keeps running. That's the main thing for Anderson. Steele back to pass. Going long. Covered by Highland and. Uh, Smith had uh, had one hand on it. He turned around and wasn't able to pull it in, but it stops the clock and it's third down now. Pass was a little short. Not a good call, frankly. <laughs> Second down and eight. You got Kim on the backfield, run him. You don't want that clock to stop. It's gotta make you wonder what, they're, uh, what message they're trying to send with that pass. All right, here we go. Third and eight. Jackets can uh, make another stop here. Steel back to pass. Has the same screen to Gill going the other way, but no dice this time. Uh, ball popped out and uh, Sattler's on it, but uh, he's down at the 41 yard line, or 39 yard line, and it's fourth down. And uh, Anderson not sending on a punting team. This is absolutely a punting situation. He's going to wait until the clock runs down, and then he's going to punt it. 
they don't look like they even have a play called. Fourth and four, fourth and six. Now well, they're lining up like they're going to do it. Timeout. They just ran a clock down to run a. Now they're going to punt it. Ball's on the 39 yard line. Five oh six to go in the game. Fifty four thirty five. A nineteen point lead. Anderson has been in command pretty much since the end of the first quarter. It was twenty to seven. Anderson scored in the first minute, minute and a half of the game, and uh, really hasn't slowed down much uh, during the course of the afternoon. Uh, Defiance has come up with some uh, key turnovers, some good plays, uh, kind of stumbled around, shot themselves in the foot occasionally, but uh, has done some really positive things out there as well. Yeah, the offense is finally looking like they have some things that they, they want to do that they can do. Yeah, they've sent uh, Helvey on to punt. And I think the Jackets may uh, again go after it. Because uh, uh, Jackets, in fact, are looking like they may think it's going to be a fake punt. They're playing a regular defense. They just seem to send Malcolm back deep. Oh. 96 just about blocked it, and it's a, a tremendous stop down what there on the one-yard line. That's a great, great play by the coverage team. We have a flag on the field, but a great play by the coverage team. Um, just, he just reached down and slapped at the ball, and it dropped dead still at the one. And let's see what the flag is about. It's on about the 33-yard line. Penalty is holding against defiance. Hopefully it was after the punt so that they don't have to change possession because a defensive holding penalty could be a first down. In this case, uh, yeah, in this case they get the ball at the one and it's about a half a yard penalty, half the distance of the goal. It was after the ball was punted. The Jackets offense gets the ball with 99 yards to go. 99 and a half it will be. 4.56 to go in the game. So it's about time for us to get one long one, like a 99 yard one. You don't get many opportunities to have a 99 yard play. No, and there's you don't single want many opportunities to get 99 yards. And there's yards. single coverage out there with number 28, Mike Baker. The safety. I think you throw it up. <laughs> Johnson White right, Schmidt left, Zegda in the backfield. Zegda gets it out to about the four. Let's <laughs> line up like that again and just pitch it. They got everybody up close. 22 is just coming in. New safety, our new cornerback. Luke Musselwhite, a junior D back from Jasper. Out to the seven. Third down, safety's right up in the line right now. Third and four. Four minutes exactly left in the ball game. Now they got wide right, wide left, two out on each side. With the new corners, you wonder if they'll test them with the, the hit screen. Yeah. Now they give it to the running back, Jendron. Slides up and has a first down. Now he's got the first down. Oh, it's Hattrick, not uh, Gendron. He's got the first down. 340 left to go, but they really need to keep moving down the field a little bit quicker than yeah. what they're doing. Now they feel a little bit better now. They're out of the shadow of the goalpost, so they can 
open it up a little bit more here, I think. Uh, four wide receivers again. Hetrick in the backfield. Gives it to Hetrick again. Second and eight. Now they only got one guy out here covering the two, so that should be interesting play. <laughs> Menfield in the shotgun with Hetrick back there. Four wide receivers. Menfield runs. He's going to have the first down out to 25, 28, 29 yard line. Pretty effective play. Um, get and got out of bounds, stopped the clock. Yep. Brown and Schmidt out here to the left, Menfield up under center. Johnson in motion. Patrick, handoff up the middle for about two or three, second and seven. Brown goes off. Griffin comes in and 99 is Johnson out wide to the right. Schmidt to the left. Hetrick moves to the right. Right down the middle, Griffin was looking for the pass, uh, and so was uh, the linebacker, number 40, Westoffer, who's having a heck of a game. He knocked it down, leaving it at uh, third and seven. Two fourteen remaining to play in the game. Minfield back in the shotgun, Gendron back in there now. Johnson out to the right. Oakers on one side, Griffin on the other. So two tight ends. Minfield on a little screen. Gendron makes a great catch of that ball. Gets up to about the 36-yard line. Well, it'll be fourth and three, and we're going to punt. Stand ball back to do the punting. Standing on his own 21-yard line. Been one of the bright spots for Defiance. Makes a good fake, almost blocked. He made a great play because the first, if he had kicked it, it would have been blocked on the first rush. He pulled it back down and effectively kicked it again and then put backspin on the ball, unfortunately. And it ends up being really no gain. Kicked it right back to the line of scrimmage. It's a tough way to end the day for Sambo, who'd punted the ball so effectively. All right, well, they're just going to hold the ball and put defiance punting. They probably won't be calling any timeouts because they think the game's over here, so. And that's uh, what's going to happen. Nobody's calling timeout. And the first string offense comes out. Second string defense or offense goes in, and second and 15. And the final score is going to be 54 to 35. Anderson uh, with a big win over the Jackets, a 19-point win.
So Anderson takes a snap, downs the ball, and uh, they may have to run. Depends on if they spot it. And they they don't. So that's the end of the game. They don't have to run another play. That's the ball game right there. So I'd like to say thanks to Mark Bachelman and Jason Bachelman uh, for helping out today at Anderson Stadium. Uh, we have the final scores: the Anderson Ravens 54, the DC Jackets 35, and a wild scoring spree here at Anderson Stadium. And until next week, we'll see you at uh, Defiance College Justin Caressel Stadium for the DC Jackets against the Hanover Panthers. So, so long. Have a great weekend.